balls and two strikes. Ruiz leads off second. He is the winning run. And the pitch to Herrera. And uh, he pulls it fair down the first baseline. The Phillies are going to win the ball game. Good Get time for your ball. first Herrera one. Get that first ball. Big league hit. It's a game winning double. The Phillies win it here in the bottom of the 10th inning. This past Monday on opening day, the weather was outstanding here at Citizens Bank Park. And now it's Turkey Hill Kids opening day today. And it is picture perfect here at Citizens Bank Park. All the smiles of the youngsters receiving the backpack, courtesy of the folks at Turkey Hill as the Phils go for the series sweep this afternoon against the Washington Nationals. Now, the Phillies have had a lot of success against the reigning National League East champs, dating back to the end of last year. The last eight games, the Phillies are 7-1. and one. They've hit 271 as a team, but their earned run average for the bullpen, a 1.99 ERA. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Ben Davis and Mike Schmidt. We get set for the finale of this three-game series. On the heels of a very exciting finish last night, where Odubel Herrera was able to pick up his first major league hits. Yeah, Tommy, uh, welcome to Philly, Philadelphia, Odubel. Uh, for those of you that haven't Googled Odubel yet, uh, you'll see a graphic on the screen here in a little bit that tells a little bit about his history. You know, I, I've loved him since the beginning. In February when I met him, uh, he's a unique hitter. Uh, as you see on TV, he has a unique style in a day when so many hitters look just the same as hitters. Uh, the big leg kick. He works every at bat to death. He's won a couple of batting titles in the minor leagues. He's going to be, as you see right there, a tough two strike game winning double down the line. Uh, some of us call him O double, if you want to know the <laughs> truth. But uh, he's the kind of player Philly fans are going to take to. They're going to love him, and I'm looking forward to the ride myself. Well, and I think all of his uh, teammates feel the same way. They said he's been energetic in the clubhouse, it's been huge for the Phils. We'll see if it continues here this afternoon. Now, they'll have to face one of the tougher pitchers in all of baseball. His first time back in the National League facing the Phillies, Max Scherzer, the number one for the Washington Nationals. He is the number one on a team of five number ones, <laughs> but he is the ultimate number one. He is phenomenal. What makes him so good is the fact that everything comes out of the same arm slot, but you see the numbers, and it was great to hear him say, you can't even fathom how much money that. I can't really wrap my head around how much money it actually is, but his career numbers are outstanding. He's been a two-time All-Star, one-time Cy Young Award winner. Uh, there's really not a whole lot that he hasn't done, but you'll see some of these pitches getting it's so hard for a hitter because everything comes out of the same slot. You can't really pick the ball up well off. He does short arm it. And the ball explodes. His fastball is a hard riding fastball. But then he starts mixing the off speed pitches coming out of the same slot. You think it's a fastball, but it's not. And in reality, if his defense was a little bit better behind him the other day against the Mets, he would have had a much better day against the New York Mets. As it turns out, he's looking for his first victory in the National League since he was a member of the Arizona Diamondbacks. It will be Max Scherzer on the mound for the Nationals, and Sean O'Sullivan will make the start for the Phils. Last year, 25 outings for Lehigh Valley, six wins. He made three appearances in a Phillies uniform last season as well. Well, a little bit of defense last night. How about Ben Revere? What did he say? It's time to change the scouting reports on his arm. Big time play. Lineups and first pitch when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank. One deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. By Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. By Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. By Budweiser. Great times are waiting. Grab some buds. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com.
Park. There's Ryan Howard signing some autographs before he took his spot over at first base as the Phillies get set for the finale of this three-game series against the Washington Nationals. Sean O'Sullivan will be given the baseball and given Larry Anderson's old number 47 as he goes out to the mound to start this afternoon's game. The starting nine greeting each of the players as they go out to their positions before the start of this ball game. Let's take a look at the Philly or the national starting lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. It's Michael Taylor leading off in center. You know, Escobar bats second. Bryce Harper hits third, followed by Ryan Zimmerman and Clint Robinson making his second start. Wilson Ramos is the catcher. He'll hit sixth. In the bottom third is Desmond at short, Ugla at second, and Max Scherzer making his second start in a Nationals uniform. And they will face right hitter Sean O'Sullivan, who last year pitched in three games for the Phillies and wound up going 6-10 and ten at Lehigh Valley. He was with the Phillies for part of spring training and then sent down to the minor league camp to stretch out his arm. He has not pitched in a minor league game yet this year, so he gets the nod here this afternoon, Ben Davis. He does, and it's making his 40th career major league start. Uh, 87-93, to 93, slider, curve, change. Just like any other pitcher, he needs to stay down, work down in the zone, and, and throw a lot of strikes. As far as how far he goes here today, they're hoping five innings at least from Sean O'Sullivan, maybe even more. As we mentioned, he's been all stretched out down in the minor leagues, the minor league camp. Time now for our Nissan keys to the game. Michael? Well, mine were button up the little things again, and we're going to talk about, well, for lack of a better term, small ball as we get into the broadcast and why we harp on that so much. Phillies need to button that up. You know, there's for the four times I can count for right now where we didn't move runners in key situations, but we did win two of those games, so that sometimes, sometimes gets brushed brushed away when you win the game but that's my key button up the small ball I think we're pretty much on the same page I wanted to fix the fundamentals you know the, the little things need to be taken care of well here's Michael Taylor to start things off it's one ball and no strikes to Taylor it's one of the air to right field and Jeff Francoeur all ready to go first opportunity of the day one out Jeff Francoeur with the high socks today. A little different look than what he must had yesterday. not be superstitious. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his double, his pitch at double should have dictated the same uniform <laughs> setup. I would have a tough time changing my uni after last night. So he's, of course, wearing these uh, throwback style uniforms on day games. They did not use it on opening day. They used the traditional red pinstripe. It's a good look. Cody Ashy over third, ready to go. You know, Escobar, the batter, he takes inside. One ball, no strikes. I've had so many people comment today already this morning about uh, our emphasis on uh, Matt Williams not bunting Escobar yeah. that bad last night. On the outside corner, it's one and one. Talking to some of the folks from the Nationals, uh, they said that Matt really didn't even address it after the game. And one of those probably feel things more than anything else. He said he wasn't in the best of moods, so he's not in the best to bring of up a sore subject. Well, his team is one and four. They're going to be fine, uh, but their defense has not been fine, and their offense has scuffled somewhat out of the shoot. One ball, two strikes. Chopper left side. Freddie Galvis is there. Nice play. During the 2015 season, Turkey Hill, the official ice cream of the Phillies, will contribute $100 for each Phillies victory. And five cents for each carton of Phillies Graham Slam ice cream sold to support the Phillies youth baseball and softball programs. Turkey Hill is the primary sponsor today to kids opening day. And there is the bat pack that fans 14 and under receive. It is a great giveaway. Had my chocolate caramel and coffee combination uh, right after the opening. You're combining flavors. I now. think I'm getting hooked on that. <laughs> Uh -oh. Here's Bryce Harper the opposite way revere to the wall and it is gone into the flower bed Bryce Harper with his second home run of the season And for the second time in this series the Nationals get a first inning home run and lead it one nothing Well, they call that the old ambush do they not nowadays? Uh, Absolutely You get two outs First pitch fastball stick that fastball right in there and that guy that is really not hitting well he had uh, nine strikeouts in his first five games. Great job of driving the baseball right there stay connected you'll hear me say that a gazillion times this year staying connected with your back arm. 
Hands close to the body. It's a powerful swing. Zimmerman hits one foul off to the right. It's 0 1. It's kind of the technique, Ben, that you talked about. I don't know if it was last night or the night before. When you're going the other way and you get a good swing and a good level plane. Well, that swing right there, we talked, you can hit any pitch to any part of the field with that swing. You know what? He probably worked all thought about it last night and worked all morning in the cage on, on trying to stay in the middle of the field or going the other way. It's a beautiful day, a little light breeze blowing out to left field, small ballpark. You know, if I stay on the ball and drive it the other way, something good might happen. And sure enough, first pitch, boom. So one nothing Nationals, one ball and two strikes to Ryan Zimmerman, who is two for 19 so far in the year. They decide to come in off the plate. It's two and two. Think about how much of a luxury that is. If you're a power hitter, if you know that you can go line to line to hit a home run, you don't always have to pull it. You you can afford to to wait. And if you get jammed at times, you get jammed. Out towards center field, and here's Herrera. And he hovers over to make the catch. Side is retired. It took uh, 12 pitches for Sean O'Sullivan to get through the top of the first. He allows a home run. Bottom of the first inning. Nationals one. Phillies coming up. Starting to loosen himself up. Phillies uh, trail at one nothing thanks to the opposite field home run by Bryce Harper. Let's take a look at their lineup brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Revere does lead it off, then Freddie Galvis. Cody Ashey for the first time in his career batting third. Ryan Howard bats cleaned up. Jeff Francoeur fifth. Odubel Herrera is in center field batting sixth. In the bottom third of Hernandez at second, rubbed behind the plate. And O'Sullivan will face right header Max Scherzer, the 30 year old from Chesterfield, Missouri. First start, outstanding. Seven and two thirds. He got the loss, eight strikeouts, and four hits allowed. And Ben, this is a premier pitcher right here, Max Scherzer. He is as good as advertised. 92 to 95, change, curve, slider, and it's 39 wins since 2013. That's the second most in all of Major League Baseball. But I talked about in the open. Everything comes out of the same slot. Up and in, two balls and no strikes. Just really has great life on his fastball. Ben Revere has faced him before when he was with the Twins and Scherzer was with the Tigers. Overall, three for 20 for the season is Revere. That one got away. <laughs> Just a bit inside. Three balls in one strike. We came to find out that last night Revere, uh, when he was at the plate, when we wondered why he was swinging away and not bunting in that one situation, he missed the sign. He swung away because he didn't see the bunt sign. Takes out the knees, three and two. Off the hands, that's out of play. It'll be Revere. Galvis and then Ashley. Here is the Budweiser scouting report that Ben was talking about. Yeah, 92 95. But if you could just really concentrate 
on how the ball comes out of his hand. That Budweiser scouting report is pretty accurate. There's ball four and Revere walks for the first time this season. Good at bat. Good at bat. Fouled up. It took a 3 1 fastball right down the middle. Well, guys, it's uh, Turkey Hill Kids opening day, and this one comes from uh, F.J. Myers, Ben Revere, and all of his Phillies glory. <laughs> F.J. Myers School. That's Damia, 12 year old, who put that together. Now, Freddie Galvis with the runner at first. And Galvis pops a foul. Kind of an interesting lineup today for the Phillies. They've got Galvis and then Cody Ashey batting third. Yeah, it jumps out at me. Uh, you know, it, it, if you can look into the future, maybe post the post Chase Utley era, um, I think that. Cody is probably somebody that they look to to groom into a three hole hitter as you know, as, as his career moves on. Um, and I know they'd like to see Freddie learn to hit hit in a two hole become a good two hole hitter as a switch hitter. Well he just asked for time wasn't granted and then took a pitch for a strike so it's 0 and 2. Runner at first one nothing Nationals here in the bottom of the first inning. Chase is being given the day off. Uh, Sunday day game. There is uh, Nikaya's version of Freddie Galvis. Freddie is always smiling. Popped up foul territory. Escobar has room. And that's a frustrated Freddie Galvis walking back to the dugout. And one away here in the first, and here comes Cody Ashy. I think he is a guy, though, that with his swing, it's a, it's not as short as Chase's swing, but it's it's pretty close. The ball really comes hard off his bat. He uses the whole field, and I think as he matures, he will be a guy that I think could get to 15 to 20. Home runs a year. Hit three home runs in spring training. And drove in 11 runs. Speaking of home runs, Charles Griffin is our contestant today in the McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot. Phillies hit a home run today. They only have one this year. Charles will win $400. Mike, one thing I think he does really well is he gets his hands into a good hitting position mm -hmm. pretty much every time. And that enables him to get his bat set and ready to attack the ball. Outside one ball no strikes. Oh, I, got, I got to know Cody. Uh, very well this spring as he was in my hitting group and. Uh, Wants to learn, likes to listen, likes to talk hitting. Just loves the game, wants to be a great player. And he's a ball striker. You got to call a timeout as a hitter there. I mean, you can't stand there and stand there and stand there and wait for him to throw that pitch. I mean, you, you have no choice but to call timeout. Used to hate that as a hitter when when they'd hold the ball. And of course, on the opposite side is that's a good thing to teach your pitchers to do is to hold the ball, to screw up the timing of the base runner and the hitter. You know, you used to do that, Sutcliffe. I hated that. Rick <laughs> Sutcliffe would stand there, and he, one time he'd hold it for a long time, and hold it for a long time. So like, are you going to call timeout or what? Am I going to stop <laughs> out or what? Or step off or what? You know, we get that call as a catcher. We get that from the manager. You know, you just give basically most. Universal, it's a fist, you know, just hold the ball. But obviously, it's meant to control the base running. But hitters in general would get so frustrated, yep. they start cursing at home plate. And I'm like, I look up at it, like, hey, it's not coming for me. <laughs> Sorry, Parker. You yeah, see, I thought a lot of times it was the pitcher who wasn't comfortable with what you were putting down. He said, I need to do that again instead no, of stepping off. A lot of the times that does come from the, from the skipper. A good example of holding the ball and controlling the ball is, is the. Uh, the pitcher for the Cubs, uh, 
hasn't thrown over to first base yet. Uh, oh, here I go John again. Lester. Yeah, John, John Lester, Lester, the senior moment. Um, never throws over to first base, but he holds the ball. He goes fast. He goes, you know, slide step, and he holds the ball. And, like you can't tell me this didn't affect because Scherzer just held that ball for a long time. You can't tell me that didn't affect Cody Ashley and how he saw the ball. Rhythm, yeah, it, it messes up your rhythm. rhythm. Exactly right. And you're jumpy, so he throws a changeup, so you're unable to catch up to it. Well, we'll talk more about Cody later, but you know, we kind of got uh, off the subject of, of Cody Ashley. It's probably the best spring training in camp aside from uh, Odubel Herrera. Gosh, he hit some balls hard in spring training. Here's Ryan Howard speaking of hitting some baseballs hard. He did so last night. Yes. Hit four balls on the worst ball he hit last night was his first. It was a double the first time up. Hit it off the end of the bat. The other three balls right on the nose. The ball he hit last night would be a home run right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Tied him up with a cutter and it's 0 and 2. As the game goes on, interesting uh, thing to watch will be pitches to Ryan Howard with Jeff Francoeur in the on deck circle. As you know, running the runners in scoring position, tough at bats. Ryan swinging the bat good. There goes Revere. Pitch is taken outside. The throw to second base is not in time. Stolen base number two. For Ben Revere. His goal is 50 this year. And he's two for three. Scherzer, Scherzer's doing a good job on him, holding holding him uh, close. And I know, I know Samuel and, and Ryan and the coaching staff want him to run earlier in the count. It's so much more valuable to get him down there before the batters get two strikes on him, especially in Ryan Howard's case. Yeah, I thought he would run even when Galvis was up. Early on, I know he's trying to get a feel of Scherzer, but I thought he would run even there. One ball, two strikes to Howard, runner in scoring position. Swing and a miss. Howard is down on strikes. 95 from Scherzer, who picks up two strikeouts along the way. Phillies trail at 1 0. We'll go to the second here in Philadelphia. Celebration of the Fanatics birthday when the Phillies take on the Atlanta Braves the unbeaten Atlanta Braves First pitch is scheduled for 135. It's brought to you by Citizens Bank and all fans 14 and under receive the Fanatic baseball socks There are going to be some surprises that day that you have never seen before If you come out to Citizens Bank Park to celebrate the Fanatics birthday Here's Clint Robinson to lead it off 
Robinson one for five so far making his second start. Chopper towards Cesar Hernandez. We saw 14 ground ball outs by Cole Hamels last night. So it shows that this team, if they keep the ball down, they definitely will get some ground balls. Well, that'll bring Wilson Ramos to the plate. Ramos, three for 16. Takes outside. What ball? Feel, no strikes. I, I feel royalty in our midst. Huh? The secretary of defense is here. Yes. <laughs> Gary Maddox is up here in the booth, soaking in the ball game here today. Outside, two and zero. Oh. I have to mention that uh, my best friend Gary Maddox critiqued my uh, color work last night, or our color work last night. All right. He explained the reason why they made that exchange. Uh, with the great tag at home plate and why that worked so well with Bryce Harper's relay throw. He did not crow hop. The one of the first thing where Utley was thrown Bryce, out of the plate. Bryce Harper did not take a crow hop, which takes a, you know, a second, which can mean the difference in the tag play at home. Ramos takes the three Pointed out for by the greatest center fielder in the history of baseball. You learn something every day, Ben. That's right. We'll be watching that. We'll be watching for the old crow hop out here on the relays. Now Gary probably did that on purpose when he played. I wonder if Harper thought the same thing. If that was in his his thought. Here we process. go. Here we go. No crow hop. Perfect relay. He did let it fly. Great tag. He might have been safe. <laughs> He also picked the ball up with his bare hand. I said, infielders, outfielders, they're all taught. Even a catcher, if a bunt is rolling, try and use your glove. If it's not, stick your hand down and pick it up. That would take extra time as well. Well, he just pointed out he didn't think the infielder was out far enough for the relay, but I must also add that the, this is a sh kind of a short porch out here. It's not that far. <laughs> Bryce Harper probably could have thrown it all the way himself. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Ramos is struck out. First strikeout for O'Sullivan. Elevated that pitch just a little bit. And there are two outs. Did a great job of bouncing back, coming back. He was behind in the count and made the pitches when he needed to make. Very surprised to see Ramos in there today. Thought Lobaton would have gotten a start, but maybe he had a good rapport with Scherzer last outing and he wanted him in there. Well, Scherzer was very good last time out. First pitch inside to Desmond. Matt Williams, the manager of the year last year in the National League. 96 wins. There is some concern about the Nationals' record uh, down at DC. They're one and four, but as somebody pointed out last night after the game, they were one game under 500 at the first of June last year, and they wound up winning 96 games. 2 0 pitch to Desmond. Well, we know they're going to throw the ball well. I mean, that's a given. They'll get those three big pieces coming back into their offense. Well, I've seen absolutely help them out. Yeah, they should be a little better team the next time we see them, although we do see him on this road trip. Worth is due back there. tomorrow, yeah. actually. So we should see him next weekend. Two balls and two strikes to Ian Desmond. And the dirt now three and two. Dan Ugla waits on deck. Strikeouts for O'Sullivan. Ian Desmond was swinging out of his shoes on that pitch. Nationals go down in order. We'll head to the bottom of the second. The Nats up one nothing.
Sports Fan. Start your day with Rob Ellis, who's probably already asleep, getting ready for Monday's Breakfast on Raw. Rob Ellis, Julian Mealy, Barrett Brooks, and Sarah Baker, presented by Virtual Joint Replacement Institute. Weekday mornings from 6 to 8 on the Comcast Network. Did that show the other day. It was fun. Were you on that show? They're awful lively that early in the morning for me, but. Uh... <laughs> Were you on the phone? Yeah. They, they, uh, they are upbeat. What time, you, what time would you get up, Ben, for a 6 o'clock radio show on WIP? Uh, i get up at 4. I think Rob said he was getting up at 3 yeah. or 3.30 for breakfast on Broad. Well, I'm pretty sure, Angelo, I think he goes to bed at like between 6 and 7 wow. and gets up around 2.30. Jeff Francoeur lines one softly to third. Yeah, there's one away here in the bottom of the second, and that will bring Odubel Herrera to the plate. Herrera one for nine. The one, though, Murph, was a pretty big deal last night. Yeah, it certainly was, Tom. In fact, it's been a long time since a Phillies rookie has had a walk-off hit as his first Major League hit. In fact, way back to 1939. But how about this cold hard fact brought to you by Coors Light? He is the uh, first rookie to have a walk-off hit in his first 15 games since a young man from Dayton, Ohio, did it back in 1973. Mike Schmidt's walk-off home run against... Bob Gibson, his second career home run. You remember that, Mike? Was it, I don't know that it was a walk-off. I think I think it won the game, but it does, I don't remember it as a walk-off, like with a big scrum at home plate and all. They didn't do that back then. They didn't I do understand, that back then. But <laughs> I thought that that was uh, more like in the seventh. Well, right? We are told it was a walk-off. Well, we can leave it at that. Yeah, I'm not, I don't have a problem with that. <laughs> let's go with that. Add to your legend. By the way, that? he drilled me in the arm uh, the next at-bat. <laughs> Did he really? Face. I was going to ask, what do you do your next at bat? He drilled me right in the left left bicep. <laughs> Welcome to the big leagues. Yeah. Well, the last time, uh, Murph, correct me if I'm wrong, but the last time a Philly uh, had his first major league hit be a game winner was back in 1939. That's right. John Boyling wow. back in 1939. I don't remember that. <laughs> It hasn't happened in the big league since 2011. Jason Kipnis did it uh, in 2011. So you think about that. You know, first major league hit to walk it off. It's certainly going to be something he remembers for a long time. Oh, so cool to watch and watch the celebration. I don't know how he got up after Papelbon drove him to the ground <laughs> during the celebration. Yeah, I mean, figure four, didn't he? <laughs> he tackled him with purpose for sure. Yes, he did. Three balls and one strike to Herrera. And he fouls that one. Well, Tom was telling me that story and I came in today and he said you know that that happened I, I go wait Bob Gibson wait that Bob Gibson he goes yes that Bob Gibson well here's the Geico quote of the day Mike this is what you said after it happened I was looking for something there he was everything I ever dreamed he would be but he threw me down and that is the pitch I hit out of the park I never remember being this excited about anything back to how about the that base hit. excited about Oh, Dubell Herrera up the middle base hit. He followed up his game winner last night with a nice ground ball up the middle base hit. I don't remember. That, that's a quote from me. That is a quote from Michael Jack Schmidt. Do we have to believe it every day? <laughs> I have to say that when I read that, read the article this morning, I thought for you as a, as a rookie to say that, I mean, you understood how great Bob Gibson was and what that actually meant. Well, there's no doubt I did that. Uh, facing Gibson back in the day for me, I mean, I had just watched him pitch in a World Series uh, like three or four years earlier and uh, just dominate the World Series. Uh, yeah, Gibson. Uh, <laughs> I, I even shake a little bit thinking about him here. You should have faced Bob Gibson. Well, I back in the day, well, that's a great point, though. But back in the day, you could get away with hitting the guy. Everyone knew what he was doing. Right. Nowadays, you get warned or even thrown out of the game. How did you well, not get that is, intimidated? The truth is, I don't want to talk over a pitch here, but the truth is I hit the home run, and then the next time they came into town. They're running again. The ball goes into center field. Herrera with his helmet in his hand heads to third, and he'll get there. The ball goes off the front of the dugout. He'll stay that way in that spot because they carry him right back to Escobar. I told you you're going to love this guy. Philadelphia fan. <laughs> Stolen base, E2, second steal of the day for the Phillies. Yeah, that was nice. I'll finish. Okay, here you see it. He asked for time and he didn't get it. That wasn't, that, that ball's got to be caught. Was that Ugla? That was Dan Ugla, yep. Yeah, that ball's got to be. The Bolays are on the ground. Uh, 
Doesn't nice have exchange. the longest arms. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Dan. He doesn't have the longest arms. The infield in here now. This is our first chance at executing the little thing called small ball, right? Of course, it is an 0-2 count. But this is almost a must because you know who's on the mound, and you're already down a run. If you can, if you can get a run here, you're in the bottom of the lineup. It, it, it's huge. One ball and two strikes to Hernandez. A pie, two and two. Well, he went for the strikeout there with the high rider. I'm not forgetting the end of that Gibson story, by the way. I'll I didn't to think you would. Okay. It's not a not, It's moment. not a good time right now. <laughs> Two with two to Cesar Hernandez. Herrera leads off third. Off the hands, out of play. All right, see if you can tell the story now before the next pitch. Comes okay, he, I, I hit a, a squibber. I probably have told this story here on the air some, at some point last year. A little ground ball up the middle, you know, like a cue shot that went through his legs and up the middle and then the run scored. So I got a home run to win a game and an RBI single. And the next at bat, whack, bam, right bicycle. <laughs> That's enough of that, kid. <laughs> Check swing. He went around. Third strikeout for Scherzer. There are two outs here in the second. So after you got hit by that ball, what did you think? I'm sorry, Mr. Gibson. It won't happen again. <laughs> and then he just growled at you. Why didn't somebody tell me he's going to? Everybody in the dugout knew he was going to hit me. You got hit when you. If you got two hits in a row off of Bud Gibson, you got a hit. He claims that this day were very good friends from you know, the Hall of Fame experiences and stuff that he, he didn't remember it. I even added to the story. Whoa, there's a broken down looper out towards center, and Taylor is going to get there. I even added to the story, and he doesn't remember it, but coming around third after the game winning home run, I stopped and allowed him to walk across the line to the dugout in front of me out of respect. See, there you go. It was a game winning home run. Eight and two thirds for Bob Gibson that afternoon. Go right ahead, Mr. Gibson. <laughs> you can go to the dugout. So. Trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, guys, here's the question. Which Nationals player is the last continuous franchise player from the Montreal Expos? Who was drafted by the Montreal Expos that is currently on this Nationals team? Answer will be revealed a little later on. Montreal had a couple of exhibition games at the end of spring training. They drew record crowds in both of those games. So it's four straight sellouts since Major League Baseball has asked them or has enabled them to have exhibition games. Here's Dan Uglo with three infielders on the left side of the diamond. Uglo swings at the first pitch. Rupp looking straight up. Ben, did he have it the whole well, way? I'm going to let you handle that one, Ben. <laughs> Hated him. 
Tell the fans what that ball does when it goes up. Oh, it goes. It just has so much backspin on it. It's always going to come back to you. That's why you see the catchers turn around. Plus, he's got the sun to contend with. Now, that one you have to catch. But if there were ones that would get up the line, <laughs> it could drop fair. <laughs> well, I, I had a, a very good first baseman in Seattle and in John Olerud. I'd yell, Big Rude! Rude! <laughs> it's all you, buddy. First thing you gotta do is throw your mask real far. Right? Yeah, so you don't step on it. <laughs> and I've smoked some umpires with that before as well. On purpose? Not on purpose. But that is, I just. And the worst thing you can do as a catcher, for all you catchers out there, is to get your glove up and hold the glove there. Sometimes you may have to do it to block the sun. Scherzer Throwing floats him one, and Hernandez drops it. He had it, and then it spun right out of his glove, and Scherzer's aboard with a one out. Well, it's going to be an E4. I would think. Hmm. Looks like the sun's in his eyes. That's in his glove. Yeah, that should be an E4. They've scored it a base hit. Wow. In the old days, the old donut uh, catcher's mitts. Mm -hmm. with, can you imagine catching a pop up in that thing? No. Mm -hmm. You have to use two hands. They see that the old timers, their hands are all, their fingers are all broken and they're just. But no, getting back to that. But point, didn't, they had, didn't they try to catch him like basket style back yeah, then? Yeah. Yeah. If you keep that glove up too high, your hands you just get rigid. You don't have you don't have any give. But it will come back to you. Well, that is officially the second hit of the day for the Nationals. It's kind of surprising that that was scored a hit. He was there. Taylor is up. Taylor fouls it away and it's no balls and two strikes to Michael Taylor a bunt foul on his first pitch and then that foul ball right there. So you want to watch this young man hit Ben. He cannot handle ball outer third from me if you see his. This is a. Old fashioned pull off stroke right here. Swing and a miss he got him. two outs third strikeout. For Sean O'Sullivan. Phillies will celebrate the legacy of Jackie Robinson later on this season on Tuesday, April 21st, the first of a three game series against the Miami Marlins. A commemorative pin will be free to all fans. Plus, it's also a Hatfield Dollar Dog Night. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Two outs, you know, Escobar grounded to short his first time up. Max Scherzer draws the throw. <laughs> Do you think that came from the bench? <laughs> it was kind of interesting. Maybe he was edging out a little bit too far. This may be the first time Matt Scherzer was ever been on base. I still haven't filled in the column on my scorecard because I, I think they might change that. It wouldn't be a hit if it were the first one. No. But I know you should never play favors, but especially here at home, you think that would be. He has 13 career hits, now 14, but 14 career hits. One ball and no strikes to Escobar. Down and away, 2-0. So I must be missing something. He, he was with somebody before Detroit. Arizona. Oh, okay. He was part of. Uh, I should know that. Well, he was part of the the Curtis Granderson trade with the Yankees. It was a three-way deal with the Arizona Diamondbacks, the Tigers, and the Yankees. Curtis Granderson was a wonderful player for the Tigers, but th that deal really helped Detroit because they got Austin Jackson from the Yankees and Scherzer. From the Diamondbacks in that deal. Real quick, Mike, what would you do with two hundred ten million dollars? Uh, <laughs> two and two. You're thinking about all the things. Well, I, I did. I, I would. Increase my rate of tipping in my travels. 
How about 14 years of 15 million dollars a year. That will happen on the back end of the deal. And a 50 million dollar signing bonus. Back toward the middle and Hernandez is there flips to Galvis not in time to get Scherzer. Well, that's I, I, I can assure you. <laughs> I can assure you a whole lot of materialistic purchases just flash through my brain. <laughs> You're gonna get another. Boat. Some of them float. Some New of them. <laughs> yeah. Some of them fly through the air. Um, I probably would give most of it to the church. <laughs> but still buy the boat. <laughs> I'll buy a boat for the church. There you go. <laughs> You're very giving with Mike's money, Ben. <laughs> Two outs. Here's Bryce Harper who homered his first time up. So two balls, one that just barely got out of the infield that should have been caught by Hernandez, and a slow chopper up the middle that didn't get out of the infield. And O'Sullivan is in a little bit of a pickle here. It's kind of what you guys talked about as far as the keys to the game. That catch is somewhat fundamental by Hernandez that he drops. Here's the home run by Harper. It's a good swing. Good powerful good. swing. You know, Sullivan here, he's had some bad fortune in this inning, but I know it's easier said than done, but you have to block that out. You have to realize that you're facing the guy who just took you deep your last at bat, his last at bat. So make your pitches. The funny thing about baseball, we say it so often. If you give them an extra out, or when you know you give them a four out, a th an extra out in an inning, it always seems to come back and bite you. Either that, or we just happen to notice it. But it's so often, it make an error and you're just praying to get out of the inning. A high fly ball to left center field. Herrera shading his eyes from the sun. It looks like he's got it lined up. He does. And the inning is over. No runs, two hits, two men left. So far, so good for O'Sullivan. Despite the home run by Harper, we'll go to the bottom of the third. You can't go wrong when you buy right. Buy Papa John's the day after every Phillies win. Get 50% off your regular menu price online order using promo code Phillies at PapaJohns.com. And by Chevrolet, presenting the Phillies National Series Sponsorship. Well, that is the Southeast Youth Athletic Association annual Easter Carnival that's going on just two blocks away, basically, from Citizens Bank Park. Having a little difficulty with those bumper cars. It's a gorgeous day to be at a ball game or to be at a carnival or maybe go down the shore and walk along the boardwalk. Max Scherzer will go to work here in the bottom of the third. All right, we've seen Ryan Sandberg talk to Hunter Wendelstead mm -hmm. in between the 
uh, bottom of the second, top of the third. And now we just saw Hunter Wendell said talking to Max Scherzer as we get set to begin the bottom of the third. All we can do is kind of assume what they're discussing. Yeah, we're assuming they're discussing uh, batters calling timeout while the pitcher's in his uh, stretch position, runners on base. Ben, you've been behind the home plate, and you 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 can hear that. But for the fans out there, there I guess there is no hard and fast rule. It's up to the umpire's discretion whether or not the pitcher's holding the ball too long. And if it happens in the game, the rest of the way here, and we're watching on TV, having to notice that the batter has to be given timeout. He can't just call timeout and jump out of the box. He has to be given timeout by the umpire. It's the umpire's discretion is whether or not he feels the pitcher can stop. What he's doing to not deliver a pitch. If he thinks he's already in the motion. Then he's not going to give you the time. And then there's the unwritten rule that it's unsportsmanlike. For a hitter to. Call timeout while the pitcher is. Made his move to the plate. In other words, not, what will happen is a hitter will call time but stay in his stance. Because he knows he has to wait for the umpire to con, you know. Consent to the timeout, and while that's going on, the pitcher may be ready to fire, breaking and going to the yeah. plate, and then the umpire yells, "Time, time, time! You got it, you got it!" <laughs> and that can uh, definitely make the pitcher mad. Well, at least in that at bat to O'Sullivan, Scherzer is working a little quicker. I mean, maybe it's also a time thing. Hunter Winnelstead said, "Hey, you got to pick up the pace there, big boy." Oh, one pitch to Revere taken low one ball one strike he walked his last time up. First walk of the year for Ben. Now I've seen I, I haven't seen it seems like all pitchers are working faster to me. I, I don't know what it is. Am I crazy? The Buchanan uh, Williams. Even Cole. For sure harangue our pitchers work fast. Absolutely. Well they're like hitters they feed off each other. In the Phillies minor league system, uh, it is a mandate that you have a certain amount of time to, to throw a pitch. I just say, you know, from a pitcher's perspective, the less you're thinking out there, the better off you're going to be. Were you a quick worker, Ben, on the mound? I was. Very quick. I figured the sooner the game was over, the faster I get to the spread. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss. Five strikeouts for Scherzer. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Budweiser is still brewed the hard way. This Bud's for you. The pitch was dirty. Man. Yeah. Even watching his speeds is 93, 4 ish, 95 ish, maybe. But it, 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 to the hitter, to the hitter, it's like coming harder than that. It's really hard to explain. It's, uh, it, it's like the ball's jumping out of his hand. It's got some hop and life. We call it life. And, uh, You know heavy, how, heavy ball. Yeah, you know, know how great hop on his fastball, and I would never compare anyone to this man with Pedro Martinez. The life, the the jump he had on his fastball, it was explosive. But you know, if you think back to Pedro and watch Scherzer pitch, they do have similar arm slots, mm -hmm. very similar arm slots. That's that old, so like overhand, but also three quarter at the same time. It's, yeah. it's it's like a real comfortable slot. It's not way up top. It's just like three quarter. Yeah, usually pitchers get the nice arc in their arm get that circle. Back behind them. He doesn't I wouldn't say it's a chicken wing but he. Short arms it to a degree. I bet you could play shortstop or did play shortstop as a kid probably quarterback in high school. That one's pulled into right field Harper comes over won't get it he'll take it on a hop. Tony Galvis with his first hit of the day it's just the second hit for the Phillies. Two out single, and it brings Cody Ashley to the plate. Freddie's feeling good up there. Um, confident, you know, he's not afraid to go to two strikes now. And uh, it's good to see. 
Seven hits and 20 at bats. See, there was a long hold right there. That was a long enough hold. And he's got Cody a little confused. Last at bat, he did it to Cody. Two strikes to Ashy. Played 121 games last year. I'm sure there have been times in college and in the minor leagues where Ashy's batted third, but it's the first time in the big leagues he has hit third in the order. Most at bats have come as a number six batter or uh, batting eighth. Breaking ball just missed. Wow. They picked a good time to hit third. <laughs> Thanks, Rhino. <laughs> that, that's been very close. Cody's caught a little in between right now. You know, he when, is. When we when we say he's caught in between, he's like, just you know, not real confident in the batter's box right now. Pulls that one off the glove of Zimmerman down the right field line. Galvis will at least get to third. Harper gets to it on the edge of his glove. And as she holds up at first, will be first and third with two men down. Well, he's confident now. <laughs> I tell you what, he got away with it. That 0 2 backdoor slider, which could have been called a strike, and then Scherzer chose to bust him inside right here. Cody is quick as a cat inside. That's good to see right there. Nice stroke, pulled his hands in. There's oh. no wasted motion in his in his swing. That's a big play right there by Huge. Harper. Huge play. If that if that ball hops over his glove and it's going to that's an inside to Parker waiting to happen right there. Yeah, when he went, he was going after it, it looked mm -hmm. like there was going to be some problems until the last moment. Howard takes a breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. Howard struck out his first time up. So he's looking for a two out hit here to tie this game up. Boy, they pitch him in a lot now. Hard in, right? Hard in and then up with two strikes yeah. a lot of times. Took the words out of my mouth, Tom. Huh? I think you might see him climb the ladder here. You know, and he's got that bat straight up and down now, standing tall. Of course, last night uh, hit four balls hard. A little bit different style of pitching, but that bat. Straight up and down like that, and that tall stance is good. Boy, it's hard to get to that top, that high fastball. You know, 95, 96 mile an hour fastball. Got him with an off speed pitch, and Howard has struck out for the second time today. Well, here's the delivery of Max Scherzer. He's picked up five strikeouts this afternoon. Actually, make it six strikeouts this afternoon, including this one to end the third.
sit at 70 pages per minute. Get yours today for up to 50% off from who? But WB Mason. You know, <laughs> you get an enemy that's uh, stabbed and actually was a walk off. Can you imagine a scrum at home plate with Bob Gibson standing there? Everybody would have been hit the next game. <laughs> Ice packs for everyone. That's scary. All right, all you guys, I'm going to remember all of you. Everybody out here is getting drilled. Here's Ryan Zimmerman to lead things off at the top of the fourth. Yeah, Gibson that day went eight and two thirds, five hits, two runs, one walk, and ten strikeouts. What was the score, Tom? Hold on one second. We've got it right here. It's been two to one. Two to one unit. Carl Graber, your statistician. Your home run was a solo shot, by the way. It was a 1 1 game in the bottom of the ninth inning. Low and away slider hooked around the left field foul pole. Ugly. 2 and 1. Now you said to uh, to Ben, you said, How old were you? 5, 6, and 73? <laughs> I was 5. Ben wasn't born. Was it? <laughs> I told you I was an old fart. There's a base hit for Ryan Zimmerman to left center field. And he'll hold up at first. And that'll bring Clint Robinson to the plate. Well, you talk about top hand a lot. I mean, look at your 500th homer in Pittsburgh. 3 0 pitch. I mean, you really. I don't, I don't you know. Top hand. The top hand on the bat must get involved in, in contact if the ball is. What in the in they say the higher area of the hitting zone? You must have some top hand. The, the top hand cannot be underneath the bat. Now the ball is in the lower parts of the hitting zone. You, know, you can you know you, you you can get away with the ball, the hand being the top hand being underneath the ball. So I believe in it. What you're saying is correct. Something I, I'm I was a dominant top hand. Yes, hitter. you were. Yes. But after the point of contact, right? I you would get to the ball. The truth be known, it's it's sort of the opposite of that is taught in all of you know hitting across the board, yeah. across the country, around the world. No one they, they they coach away from the top hand being involved in contact. Ball one strike to Clint Robinson who takes low. It's in the dirt. Rupp uh, will not have a chance to get zoomed. That was good base running right there. Uh, as soon as the ball went in the dirt, you know, he had a great secondary lead and a good jump. That'll go down as a wild pitch charged to O'Sullivan. Two and one to Clint Robinson. Robinson, 141 minor league home runs during his career. Back in 2010 in Double A, he won the Triple Crown. Hit 375, 29 home runs, 98 RBIs, and 142 game schedule. Oh my lord. 375. 375. And he spent the whole year there. Sorry, 335. No, 335. I can't I read going, my own writing. Three, say. 335, Ben. 335. And he still spent the whole year there? Spent the whole year there. Man. Yeah, that's a three. It's not a seven. Three <laughs> thirty-five. First baseman by trade. Originally drafted by the Kansas City Royals. And he lines that one over the head of Hernandez into shallow right field. Zimmerman had held up, so he'll stop at third. That's good hitting. Citizens Bank Red Goes Green Night will be against the Miami Marlins uh, on April 22nd. It's a 7.05 first pitch. The MLB Network reusable tote bag free to all fans. Tickets can be purchased by going to phillies.com. That's good hitting by Robinson. He needs to hit the ball to the right side. He was trying to do it. A uh, little humpback liner over second base set up at first and third with nobody out. And Ramos up, who we saw have that opposite field home run in last night's ball game. We don't want to let this thing get away from us with Scherzer on the mound. 
I definitely trade two outs for a run here. Tony the fourth. And Scherzer's pitch count is not in line with the third inning. You know he's uh he's in the 50s as far as his pitch count goes. So maybe you get into that bullpen again. In the air to right field. That should be deep enough to score Zimmerman. Frank Cora is under it. Robinson tagging from first. He's just drawing the throw. It's 2 nothing Washington. Sack fly for Wilson Ramos. All right. That's called small ball. Yeah. Man gets on first. Good base running gets him to second on the pass on, on the wild pitch to the catcher. Left handed hitter moves him to third with a little ball hit to the right side. Nice fly ball to right field scores a run. That's what the game is basically built on. That's the foundation of the game, doing those kind of things. Did they call it small ball when no. you guys were playing? <laughs> That's a new one. Foul tip, it's 0 and 1. It, dri it used to drive, I mean, you've talked to Charlie a million times. Charlie Emanuel was here at the ballpark. I used to drive him crazy when he used to hear the term small ball, but you're saying. That's the fundamentals of baseball, the foundation of baseball, what we just saw. Yeah, it really is. I think our fans out there need to know that we talk about it a lot. It's it's it's, it's part of the game. The fun, it's the fundamental part of the game that um, managers, coaches stress to the hilt in spring training. It's a part of the game that's very hard to gauge too. I mean, the only way you, I can really gauge it is say, you know what? You want to know who the the team the teams that are the best in baseball at. Doing the little things on a daily basis, doing them consistently, respecting them. Teams like St. Louis, San Francisco, who's won three uh, out of the last five years, won a world championship. They pride themselves, right? They pride themselves in this country. I think we're all in agreement that if you get to the postseason, that's what's going to help win you a postseason. Things get tighter, magnified even more. Well, help you get to the postseason too, but really win those championships. But in reality, you know, every one of these games that they're playing now, in, in yeah. effect, it, oh, you know, like it, it is a postseason game. I mean, it should be it should be approached as a postseason game, and then, like for us anyway, because. We don't have two or three 30 home run guys. No, we don't power any team. When we talk about the fundamentals, this is last night, well documented. The bunts the Phillies did not get down. In fact, Ryan Sandberg said after the ball game, we made our life a little difficult with our lack of fundamentals on these particular plays. That's just, you know, poor bat angle. You want to get the, the, the bunts down the lines, and we didn't even we Left out the one that Cole Hamels had. He bunted right. right in front of Ramos, made a good clean throw. Desmond, whatever reason, just missed it at second. But that is those things that you just, especially, you just can't sit around and wait for a three run homer. Just well, when you only have one, you know, we, we only have, well, Chase, Chase is obviously has the potential to hit 25. Uh, or 30, and of course Ryan does. Uh, Chuchel hits just some home runs. Well, they all hit just some home runs, but we're not a home run hitting team. We're, we're not a no. We're not the lumber company, the big red machine. Uh, we're that Phillies team, or the 2008 version of the Phillies. You know, we're just not like that. I mean, we're not going to make up for poor fundamental offensive play with a three-run home run later in the game. See what the on a regular basis. See what the two teams have done with runners in scoring position in this series. One ball, one strike to Ugla. Chopper towards short. This could be two. Galvis to second for one. Hernandez's relay, not in time. That hop to Galvis just wasn't hit hard enough to turn two. So there are two outs, and Scherzer's coming up. No, it wasn't there. That was just one of those ground balls, the three or four high hopper that you really had no chance uh, to turn two on. A lot of times. Still a very good exchange between the two. Yeah, it, it was really close. It was almost, it was almost uh, one of those where maybe Hernandez should have just caught the ball and got out of the way at second base. You're risking a bad throw or someone dropping the ball with a man rounding third. 
Well now Scherzer who reached on a blue pit off the glove of Hernandez is only time up. Wax that one foul. It's 0 and 1. Getting some hacks. Must have learned something from Miguel Cabrera during those years in Detroit. He only had four hits yesterday. He had a three run home run today. <laughs> of course he did. Actually, he has two home runs today, Ben. <laughs> it's 7 3 Detroit. <laughs> 0 and 2. Brad Ausmus told me in spring training, you know, you're 260 pounds, you have a perfect swing. That's what happens. <laughs> so we had a major league scoreboard. The Braves unbeaten trail the Mets 3 to 2. That game's in the bottom of the fourth inning in Atlanta. Phillies so will head to New York for the Mets home opener tomorrow at City Field. Runners on first and third. The 0 2 to Scherzer. Wax it to the right side, and this time Hernandez has it, and he could have walked it over to the bag. He gets Scherzer. One run is in on a sacrifice fly. Yeah, it's a perfect day to be outside. Try to find something to do. Maybe support the Southeast Youth Athletic Association Easter Park. Dealer.com. Buy Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. Shop Nissan.com. You guys like the zipper? Is that a ride like that? Would you go on a ride like that, Mike? No, Ben. Ben, would you fit in a ride like that? <laughs> no and no. <laughs> Here's Max Scherzer getting set to begin the fourth. His routine is odd. He gets the throw and then just wanders behind the mound. This has always been the way he's pitched. He's the wanderer. I mean, he really is. And that could be part of what Hunter Wendelstead talked to him about. I mean, we're we're already at zero, although he made the last out, so he doesn't have to listen to the rules. Made the last out as a hitter. Outside, one ball, no strikes to Francoeur. That should have been a fastball. That's what Jeff Francoeur is thinking. <laughs> to right field, Bryce Harper battling the sun and makes the catch. One out. And that'll bring Odubel Herrera to the plate. Well, Max Scherzer caused the Murph, the Nationals, to have a very good problem to deal with at the start of the season. Yes, everyone should have the problem that the Washington Nationals have. You know, Ben, you talked about it right in the open of the program. Uh, Max Scherzer is a number one on a staff that is really chock full of guys that can be considered ones or twos around Major League Baseball. And when you look at it, it, it was really remarkable. Take a look at this. Max Scherzer, there you see it, 18 and 5 a year ago with Detroit, the ERA at 3.15. Take a look at the other guys. Jordan Zimmerman at 14 and 
and five for the Nats last year. Strasburg 14 and 11. Joe Gonzalez is the only one without a winning record. He was 10 and 10 last year, but his ERA still just three and a half. And then you have Doug Fister. And how about Tanner Roark? We saw him last night. He's a guy that's in the Nationals bullpen, but he won 15 games a year ago for the Washington Nationals. He was terrific and uh, has been relegated to the bullpen to do what he can to help this Washington Nationals team this year. So you have to give a tip of the cap to Mike Rizzo and his staff, the general manager of the Washington Nationals, and what they've been able to do putting the staff together. And Murph, uh, they thought, uh, folks around baseball thought, I I know I was one of those people that thought that once they signed Scherzer that they would trade yeah. Jordan Zimmerman or even Fister because both of those guys will be free agents at the end of this year but they've decided to go all in with this rotation for at least this year. Yeah, and why not? You know, when you think about it, the expectations for the Nationals over the past couple of years have been very high and they have not panned out as of yet. So perhaps that's uh, the thinking behind that saying, you know, most of the time, you're going to need more than five starters throughout the course of a Major League Baseball season. Why not hold on to a guy uh, like Roark in, you know, in that sixth spot or keep all, all six of these guys in hopes that uh, you get back to the postseason and, and perhaps win a World Series? Just saw Mike Rizzo, who's the general manager of the Washington Nationals. There he is. Spoke to him this morning at the hotel. Very nice man. Always wanted to meet him. He... Uh, Agreed with me that the team is struggling a little bit right now. As we said last night, uh, that they're one, two, three hitters in their lineup uh, aren't with them. As you said, uh, um, the three hitter will be back tomorrow. Jason Worth, who homered yesterday in his rehab assignment, he said, "No one feels sorry for us." <laughs> Phillies know exactly where he's coming from when it comes to that kind of stuff. Two balls and two strikes. But it makes sense in this day and age if you can afford it to keep to keep a little stockpile of starting pitching. Along with having six legit starters. Popped him up left side. Desmond and Escobar. There are two outs. Well, it's time to take a look at your T Mobile game changer. And last year, that I think we were all kind of surprised by this that the Nationals, the best strikeout to walk ratio in the modern era, 3.66. In fact, I we might have, might have been surprised that the Yankees were there too at 3.4. Very surprised. Very surprised. Being in that division, though, a lot of they just that's why they play the four hour games. They don't give in, they'll put you on. But I, that's why I was so surprised to see the Yankees up there. Cesar Hernandez fouls it back. It's one ball, one strike. Cesar struck out his first time up. I told you, uh, 2011 Phillies on that uh, list. 2012. You think with Doc and Cliff and Cole, and they would be. At the top, but apparently not. 3 1 on the put out. 1 2 3 go the Phillies. Boy, this really wants to, this really makes you want to go down to the boardwalk. Maybe go to Ocean City or go out to Point Pleasant, something like that. Getting in the swing in the summertime.
Baseball.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. That's a must. I have in this that day and age, everything. It's the great. It's one of the greatest things in the world. You know what I like the best when you're in a hurry somewhere. You can watch the condensed version yeah. of the game. I have that with football too, where you can watch the condensed version, like in the NFL games. 11, 12, 13 minutes. You can watch the whole game. One ball and one strike to Taylor. Well, I love getting a chance to listen to the radio broadcasts of. I mean, for us, like later on today, we'll put on like the West Coast games as we're heading up to New York. Swing and a miss, one ball and two strikes to Taylor. He's 0 for 2. He's fly to right. He is struck out. Let's see if uh, the Phillies have picked up on what you guys are talking about about the outer half of the plate for Michael Taylor. He took Jerome Williams deep his first at bat here, and knock on wood, he hasn't done anything since. I mean, he a lot of strikeouts. There's another one. We got him looking. John O'Sullivan quietly pitching a pretty nice ball game. I mean, 67 total pitches in uh, a third of the way through the fifth inning. His location, and Ben, you talked about this during the outset, his location's been very good today. Been very good. How is his command? <laughs> I've been trying not to use it. <laughs> The word that is Escobar takes in. One I'm ball, seeing no a lot strikes. of movement on his pitches today, which which is great. Well, he's given us everything we could ask out of the fifth starter. It's, you know, been working in the minor leagues. Ten of twenty first pitch strikes. Now he'll be in this role. Phillies hope until Chad Billingsley is ready to go. Two oh pitch. Fouled off to the right. Two and one. <laughs> well, they blew their own. Young man dropped the dropped the foul ball right well, there. Well he had it too. Had it not that it's that easy. Used two hands. It wasn't a glove. He didn't have a glove, but he dropped it, got a couple of boos. You got to make that play. Here's another one. Not that easy, Tom. Well, it's easy for you, but it's not for for others. He had a glove. <laughs> I did have a glove. I was a smart participant. Well, there's a good play right there. That was a very good play. I was a smart participant in the stands. I didn't actually have the glove on though when the ball was hit. No. <laughs> two balls, two strikes to Escobar. Escobar hitting 286. Pitch is thrown all day there at 92. He's got Harper waiting on deck. Pulled that one, caught by Cody Ashy on the glove side, two outs. Nice play by Cody, watching into his glove. I can hear Pete Rose right now screaming, stay with him. <laughs> Every time the Phillies pitchers retired the opposition one, two, three, O'Sullivan did it in the second. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. Why is Harper getting hacks? Oh, man, hacks. <laughs> You know, I, I love it. I mean, why waste time? So they don't put they don't put which pitch it is you hit when you hit a home run or a base hit or a double or whatever. Why waste time? Why wear undershirts? <laughs> <laughs> no undershirt. Oh yeah, that's a sleeve. <laughs> 
Each his own. I thought it was a blue undershirt. I'm sitting there thinking, he's wearing an undershirt. He's it's hot out today. Why you looked at me so <laughs> funny there, Tom. <laughs> Over the mound, Galvis around the bag. Better hurry, and he does. Second one, two, three inning for Sean O'Sullivan. Sign is retired in order. Maybe we can get you guys on the slide. Get you a sack. Let's see if we can race. Let's see who goes down the fastest. Trivia quiz answer. All right, guys, which Nationals player is the last continuous franchise player from the Expos? Last guy drafted by the Expos still on the Nationals roster. I thought this I got to go with Zimmerman. Um, it's actually a very good guess. It is incorrect, though. Very good guess. You're well, close. I was going to say Ryan Zimmerman. You're it's a very good guess, Ben. But it's incorrect. Well, there's Jordan Zimmerman on the team as well. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Cabra and Rupp to lead it off. He's on the infield right now. Drafted in the uh, fourth round. Got to be Desmond then. Ian Desmond back in 2004. Who would know that? I now, thought for now sure everybody knows it was Zimmerman. <laughs> Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize pack. Swing and a miss. One ball and two strikes. Somebody may get a chance to play in Montreal again in the near future. We'll see what happens with that. They would love to get baseball back. Foul territory. Zimmerman. Sunglasses on. Hand up. Makes the catch and one away. Well, whatever happened, happened to the, I guess, uh, the, the shades he's wearing don't do the job. The old flip downs used to uh, totally block the sun out. Yeah, he he was having trouble even with those on right there. You see if I wear the flip down sunglasses anymore? I thought Tony Gwynn Jr. wore them. I think he may have. I remember reason. playing with Mike Cameron used to wear them. Yeah. When I was in Seattle, he would always wear them. For some reason, I thought Harper or Jason Worth, one of them, thought, no, Jason Worth didn't wear them. Now, somebody wore them in the outfield for the Nationals. Like maybe it was Harper at one time. That would have sliced down the right field line and it'll be out of play. And when I was a kid, I just dreamed of maybe someday having a chance to wear those things. You know? And then learn to flip them down. Everybody's getting into the, the sunglass party. Yeah, back then, uh, when I was a kid, when you were playing, you couldn't get those. You know, if you played the game, no, no, the they amateur, were they were exclusive to professional baseball. Two and two.
Sean's hanging tough here. Fouls another one away. Good half. Run that pitch count up. Yeah, the next one will be 80 for Max Scherzer. Six fly ball out, six strikeouts, just one ground out for Scherzer. Three and two. Nice eyeball. That movement on that pitch. <laughs> Inside ball four. What oh, Sullivan is aboard. Good keepers. <laughs> Second walk issued by Scherzer. Last week, Philly sports fans were buzzing about the premiere of Breakfast on Broad. Guest appearances included Schmidt, Chase Utley, Kurt Schilling, Bernard Hopkins, Pat Gillick, T.O. Don't miss out. Wake up with Breakfast on Broad weekdays from six until eight on the Comcast Network. You threw my name in there. That was nice. I did. I have to apologize. I didn't know that you were on last week. You should have taken over the studio like T.O. and he was there well, all day. I was, I was, I was uh, not in person. I was on the phone. What a note of Ben Revere. By the way, that was the first career walk for Sean O'Sullivan. And you were here to see it. Had the first one of the year for Ben Revere earlier in the game too. Pulls that one softly to right field. That'll drop for a hit. O'Sullivan will stop at second. Station to station. And with the exception of that second inning, you know, his pitch count is getting up there a bit, but the innings haven't been very stressful for him. Had to work too hard. Hopefully that can change here. Yeah, 23 pitches in the third. The second inning, Ben was talking about, he threw 15. And that's where the Phillies had a runner at third with one out. Yep. And could not get that run home. Out of play, one, uh, no balls in one strike. Phillies have a little predicament right here with O'Sullivan, the runner on second base, and our fastest run <laughs> here on first. Hand him the baton. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you jump on his back. Pete McCannon over there is trying to figure out a way to tell Ben Revere to watch the watch the runner ahead of you. Oh, and two. Did a nice job of keeping that in front of him. That's a good take. That's one of those pitches Freddie in the past has had trouble with. You know, two strikes jumping out there. And they react an early reading fastball right when the ball leaves his hand. The thing he works on is uh, has worked on in the spring is realizing that he can trust that he can get to any fastball. Keep wasting them, wasting them. That's playable for Escobar or Desmond, and Desmond makes the catch. And now two outs. Well, somehow the Phillies have uh, got to figure out how to cash in. No way Escobar was going to catch that ball. Desmond had to make that play if anybody was going to. The Phillies had a runner in scoring position in the first. Another in the second, another in the third, and now they have one here in the fifth inning. Trailing a two nothing, and Cody Ashy, who is one for two, will be the batter. And a liner out toward right field. Harper's coming over. He can't get it. He'll knock it down. O'Sullivan will score the throw to the plate. Not in time. It'll be a double for Ashy. It's a two-one ball game. He's lucky. Harper's lucky there, isn't he? 
Lane after that ball, ball doesn't get Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. That's good point. Uh, what a quick not a time swing. to do that. Yeah. That's not the time to do that. But he got away with it there. I was, I was thinking to myself that for a Sullivan to score, it's got to be something either down the line or in a gap. But that'll work. Harper throws it all the way over the cutoff man to home on a fly and allows Cody to go to second. Yeah, correct myself. They've scored a single and he did go to second on the throw. I thought once he bobbled it, they might give him a double, but it's a single and he goes to second on the throw. Interesting situation here. First base open with Ryan Howard, the hitter. Frank Cool on deck. Three years ago, four years ago, they would have walked out. Automatically. Yeah. A little different story now. They've got him twice on strikes. Well, Cody turned his day around. Start off with that uh, call third strike. Looking 0 2 is second at bat. You got life with that uh, 0 2 pitch being called a ball and roped a double down the first baseline. And now another hard hit ball. Big RBI right there. Two out RBI. Now equally a big spot for Howard with the count one ball one strike and two in scoring position. Late on the fastball it's one and two. And that's the jump. I mean that ball you're looking at it's right down the middle 95 but the ball just gets on him. One ball, two strikes to Howard. Got him. Third time today, Ryan is struck out. Side is retired. Three score one, they leave two in scoring position. We'll head to the sixth. It's a two one ball. Obviously in a hurry to get somewhere last season because he was racing all around the diamond. Ben became the 12th player in Philly's team history to swipe 40 bases in a single season. And the first since J-Roll did so in 2008. In addition, he tied for the National League lead in hits, led in singles, and put up a career-best 306 average. Revere's run is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, a beautiful day here at Citizens Bank Park. Ben Revere certainly had a big night last night with that throw to home to help the Phillies to the victory. Today he's one for two. He does have a stolen base. Ryan Zimmerman will lead it off. Zimmerman takes inside. It's one ball and no strikes. Singled his last time, scored on a sack fly. Flied out to center his first time up. In the dirt, 2 0. Oh. Murph, we just played uh, Ben Revere's last Independence Blue Cross Philly of the Week. 
uh, moniker. Mm -hmm. Did you talk to him before the game about his throw last night? I did. I was, I was, well, I was calling him Hose. I was just teasing <laughs> him a little bit. <laughs> I said, here he comes, here comes Hose. And he's like, that's right. Don't forget it. Yeah, you know, he obviously was very excited about uh, that throw last night. It was a near perfect throw from the left field and, and a big part of the game, too. So uh, he said, you know, after the game, he told reporters that he had, to, that they'd have to change the uh, scouting report. On, on him because now he's got a big time arm. So, but it, honestly, good to see though because he did it once in spring training as well from left field. Right. You remember he threw a strike and, and, and got a guy at the home plate. So, um, you know, it's part of the reason they moved him over to left field. So, they're going to need him to do that from time to time. He was able to do it last night. Guys, why did why did Ryan Sandberg say his arm plays better in left field? What's the big difference between center field and left field? Shorter. Uh, ball gets to you a little quicker. Uh, like when he charged that ball last night, cleanly, it's a lot. Different throws a lot different than that same style throw after the ball has bounced up through the center of the diamond into center field. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You also don't have the mound to contend with. That's true. That's a good point. I never even thought about the fact that I mean he has had a lot of throws that have hit that mound. Yeah. And you got a clean open lane to home plate there. Well, Herrera is going to be the everyday center fielder, and Revere will be the everyday left fielder. Phil Philly certainly have speed out there. By the way, Bob McClure is heading out to the mound. O'Sullivan just walked his uh, first batter. He did hit a batter earlier in the game, but he walked Ryan Zimmerman. They do have Justin DeFreitas starting to warm up in the bullpen. I have to call Ben Revere. Chuck Connor. The Where's rifleman? The rifleman. You're too young for Chuck Connor. He's too young for. I'm too young for Chuck Connor. Mike, do you I'm remember perfect Chuck for Connor? Chuck Connor. I cannot <laughs> tell you how many times I stood in the living room and waited for that show to come on. You really? know how Chuck Connor, the the ding, ding, the rifleman, and he'd oh, yeah. go, he'd get his rifle out and go. <laughs> <laughs> I took every one of those bullets. <laughs> You know, in the living room, falling on the couch, dead in a doornail. Chuck Connors, I thought he, he shot me about what a hundred times in my life. All, all twelve. How many? I don't know how many bullets were in that bad boy, but twelve. I would say it's a twelve gauge shotgun. I don't think twelve is the gauge. I think that's the bullet size, isn't it? I was just trying to sound no. smart. I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> he never ran out of ammo. <laughs> By the way, he came he came into our locker room in uh, uh, Dodger Stadium one night. Big baseball fan. Clint Robinson, the batter, no balls, one strike. Check swing, slow Oops. roller. They'll get it out at first. Up to second goes Zimmerman. <laughs> right for my Paul. Call him, you know, the kid used to call him Paul. Paul, where you, where's Paul? <laughs> All right, enough of the old. So you major league scoreboard. The Rays lead the Marlins six to two. Ben and I don't will, ask me about Andy and me. <laughs> ben and I will download some on iTunes or uh, on Netflix, and we'll watch some on this road trip. There is Wilson Ramos, who has struck out. He's also got a sacrifice fly. Micah, the sheriff, or the doctor? The sheriff? No, Micah was the sheriff. So we're going to have to Google all this just to be up to speed. Here's Galvez. Nice play. He's ready. Over the third goes Zimmerman. You know, nice he has up. had a, he has three errors on the year. Done some tough plays. We know he's going to be very solid defensively. But I would have to say that the Phillies are extremely happy. And who knows if it's going to last. But extremely happy with his offensive production thus far from both sides of the plate. He is doing what they have asked him to do. He's not going to have the same extra base hit ability of Jimmy Rollins. He's just not going to have as many home runs as Jimmy Rollins. No. But. Well, if you want to multiply his numbers right now over the course of the year, he's had 21 at bats and seven knocks. And I'm sure the Phillies would take that. But it shows that he's willing to at least try it. I and mean, he's seen that he's reaping the rewards right now. He's seeing that success. So again, hopefully that can continue. 
one ball no strikes to Desmond who is 0 for 1 hit by a pitch in the fourth inside and it's 2 and 0. Davidson says that Desmond went and it's two balls and one strike. And Sean O'Sullivan was with the Kansas City Royals. He was 5 and 12 with an ERA a little over six. His pitching coach then was Bob McClure. Part of the reason why the Phillies were comfortable in signing him last year and using him and bringing him up to the big leagues. Now I want you to call this pitch right here, Ben. 2 0, he threw him a nasty slider, which he checked swing because, you know, it looked like he was sitting all over fastball 2 0. He threw him a slider and got a check swing. Now he's 3 1. Would he throw the same pitch? Honestly, I, I'd put him on with ugly on deck. I mean, I, I just would. I mean, I wouldn't even a lot take of schools that of thought, but explain that to me. If you would throw him a 2 0 slider, because first base is open. It's a big run. This run on it's third huge. right here. Um, you throw him a two and zero slider, but you throw him a three and one fastball down the middle. I wish I had an answer for you. Unless you're thinking that he's thinking you're going to get a three one slider. Try now think him. Yeah. Try now think him. Three two pitch to Desmond. Breaking ball in there. Called strike three. Five strikeouts for Sean O'Sullivan. Six solid innings for the Phillies right-hander. He freezes Ian Desmond. Yep, he may have out. We have been able to outthink him there. Coffee is just one dollar. McDonald's. Ah, I'm loving it. And buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Well, the Dragon Coaster has been uh, active today over at the Carnival. Matt, who's our camera operator, uh, spent a little time over there. Has he made it back to the ballpark yet? He is back. That's not Matt sitting there, but that is Matt's camera taking that shot. In left field. Keeping in the old sitcom, not sitcom, the old Western theme. Who was the easy loping, cattle roping cowboy? <laughs> Ray Tipton, our director, just told me it was Sugarfoot. I don't know who Sugarfoot is. You don't know him? Is. No. <laughs> Will Hutchins? <laughs> Frank Cora lifts it out towards center, and Taylor is there. And there's one out. You need to go forward about 10, 15 years, and then I'll be able to answer the sitcom. All right, questions. who was the tall, dark stranger there? 
Is that the same genre? Is it the same time frame? Maverick was his name. He had all the good cowboy shows. We didn't have anything like that. We were the tail end of Bonanza. Cheyenne, <laughs> Cheyenne. <laughs> oh, you got me going now. If we ever play Trivial Pursuit, Ben, make sure you mark down that Mike can answer all the questions about Absolutely. all the Western TV shows. Here's Odubel Herrera, and it's a swing and a miss. It's 0-1. I'm sure all our old, elderly fans out there are having fun with this. Well, for those watching the game or listening, Mike just reenacted getting shot by the <laughs> rifleman in between <laughs> innings. Herrera is one for two. He singled his first time up. Outside. If, if you're a fan out there and you got shot by the rifleman, as a kid, go ahead and tweet. <laughs> I go will tell you tweet that, Tom. Uh, in between innings, I did get a, a tweet uh, from Glenn Boggs, who said he had one of those rifleman guns when he was little, and he said he tried to swing it around and it caught him and uh, with the, knocked himself down. <laughs> with the circle? <laughs> he used to cock that thing with one, arm, with one hand. We did neglect to say, though, that Chuck Connors uh, did play in the big leagues for the Dodgers. Mm -hmm. He also played basketball. So that's why when you said that you saw him in Dodger Stadium, not only because he acted there, but he did play for the Dodgers. One ball and two strikes to Herrera. Slow roll up the first base line. Zimmerman's got it and wins the race to the bag. He was sort of indecisive of what he wanted to do. But there are two outs here in the sixth inning. Who are the four players who best represent the history of the Phillies? And who are the four greatest living Major League Baseball players? Go to MLB.com slash franchise four to cast your ballots. Winners will be revealed during the All-Star Game July 14th on Fox. And uh, we did find out, uh, and somebody did mention this earlier in the year, and I should have remembered it, that the reason is Hernandez bloops it into left. The reason it's four is because there were there are four presidents there were four folks on Mount Rushmore. So that is the theory behind why they've chosen to choose four. Makes sense. We got the two out base hit by Hernandez. Cameron Rupp comes to the plate now. We just might want to know we got a pretty strong bench today. We got Chase Utley, Carlos Ruiz, Darren Rupp, Brady Sizemore. And Andres Blanco. And depending on who you want to make the double switch with, if you do decide to make it a double switch, you know, if Rupper makes the last out, you could throw Chooch in there, but you really want to do that. You just want to flat out give him a day off. Or the same thing, you know, he could flip flop, chase flip flop with, with Hernandez at second. It was still a little early to be thinking about Chase. By the way, Scherzer has not made a high velocity throw over to first today. Everything's been just what you just saw. Well, you have Kenny Giles, it looks like, ready in the bullpen or warming in the bullpen anyway. It looked like his windup. He was up loosening before or stretching before. I believe that's Garcia. Is it Luis Garcia now? Yes. There is Luis. similar windups. Meanwhile, Stammen. Who seems to throw every day to your right, Sedeno to your left for the Nationals. And a called strike three. Rupp is down looking. Side is retired. No runs. One hit and one man left. Eight strikeouts for Max Scherzer. And we'll head to the seventh.
Time for your Delaware Valley Honda dealers game summary on Turkey Hill kids opening day. Bryce Harper's home run in the first. Got the Nationals on the board. Max Scherzer eight strikeouts through six innings so far. Sean O'Sullivan went six innings as well. His day is done. He threw 91 pitches. Did a very nice job for the Phils. Yeah, the Phillies trail at two to one. On a beautiful sunshiny afternoon here in Philadelphia. We go to the top of the seventh inning. Turkey Hill Kids Opening Day. Dan Ugly leads it off against Luis Garcia. First pitch is taken low. It's one ball and no strikes. Garcia to face Ugla. And then Reed Johnson is in the on deck circle. So Scherzer's day is done. And there's a line drive foul down the left field line. You can't say enough about what Sean O'Sullivan did today. You just can't. First start of the year. Well, I, I agree with what you said before, and you guys were talking about location, but I thought the movement on his pitches was as good as we've seen. That's his fourth outing in a Phillies uniform, three last year, but his movement was very good today. Excellent. The only, the, the, only, the only poor start we've had is David Buchanan at this point. Right? I mean, yeah, Cole gave up the four last solo runs opening on Monday. Night, but opening night, you're right. But from a staff standpoint, staff ERA of 3.33. 3.33 coming into today's game. And O'Sullivan six innings today and two earned runs. Swing and a miss. Down on strikes is Uglo. One out. Well, here you go, guys. O'Sullivan's afternoon. There's a ground out by Clint Robinson, and then he got some strikeouts along the way. Struck out five. His career high is six. Yeah, elevated a fastball there, but I mean, pretty much everything was down in the zone. Uh, you know, elevated when he needed to, mix in some off speed pitches, was able to throw some off speed pitches behind in the count as well. And he went out there and, and did a wonderful job for the Phils. Reed Johnson will pinch hit with one out here in the seventh, so Scherzer's done after six. Two pitches for Max Scherzer. Out to shortstop. Freddie Galvis is up with it. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They will each receive a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal. And that's helping you bank. So this is back. Two away. Michael Taylor 0 for 3 against Sean O'Sullivan. Throwing fastballs in. Based on where his left foot and his, his front shoulder are going. Mm. Three guys went mm, at the same time. <laughs> Hunter Wendelstead has uh, called that a strike quite often here this afternoon. Because it was a strike. Yes, it was. <laughs> At least from our standpoint, it was. I do believe that may have been in the same spot. Maybe a little lower? A little bit lower.
Make a pitch here. Last thing he wants the dreaded two out walk. Just right. always seem to come back and bite you up. Three two pitch. Ooh, that got a piece of Hunter Wendell stick. Ruff wanted it down and away, and the pitch came up and in. It's ball four. Looks like he was catching fastball, and the pitch happened to be like a cutter or a slider or something. We're right in the Part of that chest protector. I'm trying to figure out what happened there. It's a weird one. Because he was calling for it down like and away, right? Like yeah. He kind of looked down and the ball caught a little bit. Well, the two out walk brings Escobar to the plate where he's one for three today. He lined out to third. His last time up, Tower is caught. You better get rid of it. And he's out at first base. Hernandez almost waited too long. And Michael Taylor is picked off. It's going to go down as a caught stealing. One, six, three. Side is retired. Time to stretch. Let's see if the Phil's offense can get something going. Alyssa Flaherty. Alyssa Flaherty. as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning clocking in at 70 pages per minute the HP office jet pro X is the perfect addition to your starting lineup and now 50 percent off get yours today from who but WB Mason first Phillies game ever and she has chosen a Turkey Hill kids opening day what a great day to come to the ballpark it's a gorgeous afternoon the place looks great Kids received the uh, bat pack today. All kids 14 and under. She couldn't carry it, so or he couldn't carry it, so he decided to carry it for her. This is the kind of weather we had on opening day. Absolutely gorgeous outside here today. The Phillies will head on the road. They'll take on the New York Mets tomorrow. The Mets opening day. Here's Xavier Cedeno, his fourth game of the season. One inning so far, two strikeouts. So Scherzer's done. Eight strikeouts, six innings of work. And it looks like Darren Ruff is going to pinch hit for the Phils as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. So I tell you, I, I've, I've been in weather. 
Iowa, Florida. We haven't we haven't had a bad day in Florida. The whole spring training. What we have. Unbelievable weather. Just had the training. one day where it rained during when, we, when the Phillies yeah. played the Yankees. Then, that was uh, it. I guess another two or three weeks after that. And uh, coming up here, two beautiful days here. The weather's been fantastic. The hope is that things have turned here. So now, as we get ready to go on the road to New York and Washington, it'll be the same. So Darren Ruff will pinch hit in the bottom of the seventh inning. Xavier Sedano pitched earlier in the series. The veteran left-hander came up with the Houston Astros. First pitch outside, one ball, no strikes. It'll be Ruff, Revere, and Freddie Galvis. Fills down by just one. Inside, two and zero. Oh. Darren 0 for 11 so far. You hope he gets going because he could be a weapon off the bench or as we have seen as a fourth outfielder backing up Howard at first. It was funny as he's had two starts. One is a five hole hitter and one is a cleanup hitter. Yeah, he, average wise he didn't have a great spring but I, I thought he hit the ball well during spring training even with the outs. In the air to left field. He left one up and Darren Ruff didn't miss it. It is gone. So the oh. home run and we're tied up at two. Kick mule. <laughs> Perfect spot for Darren Ruff. Woo. That's good. That's good to see. We get him going. I'm excited. Only the second home run of the year for the Phils. Frank Poor had the other. And we're finally able to give some cash away. Oh, it's hammer. I, I, I look like a fastball, a little about belt high right down the middle. I, I personally disagree with the call. Why do you want to challenge a guy inside? Oh, yeah. A guy that in a one run ball game, late in the ball game, if he's going to take me deep, he's going to take me deep to center or to right field. But that was a great, great swing, short and crisp. Used his lower half and really drove that ball. The ball went a long ways. It's a 2 2 game. Charles Griffith of Philadelphia, you've just won $400 thanks to Darren Ruff in the McDonald's home run jackpot. Ben Revere is retired on a fly ball to center. Speaking of home runs, Murph, you have an update on home runs? Yeah, yeah, it was certainly good to see from Darren Ruff, and uh, also good to see is Don Brown uh, getting in his rehab work down in Clearwater. Those guys were on the road today playing at Dunedin, and Brown was one for three on the afternoon. He also hit a home run in that game, and he also walked. Uh, played a little right field for the Clearwater Thresher. So working on that rehab start and working his way back from that Achilles tendonitis, as we will probably see Don Brown up here, I would imagine, within a week or so. So that's good news, guys. Murph, was the wind blowing out in Dunedin? I don't know. It's always windy in Dunedin. <laughs> it it is. just seems like it's always that, windy. That's a good place to hit, I think, for sure. Well, that's a good sign. One ball and no strikes to Freddie Galvis. Galvis one for three today. Singled in the third. He popped up his other two times. And batting right handed for the first time. Boy, his front foot, I don't know if I ever noticed this before. <laughs> see it, you see it on the, the white box. line? Yeah. yeah, it's on the white line. Or way to the edge of the box, I should say. He's moved it in a little bit. No, nope, now it's out. Hmm. So then you came in the other night, gave up that big. Two run single to Cesar Hernandez. It's touch for a tater here. Almost like an automatic strike there with the count three and zero oh to the outside part of the plate. With the umpire, he just apologized to him. <laughs> See how he's gliding forward, 
Way past the center of gravity. That's not good, Freddie. Fly ball to right field. Bryce Harper. Two outs. Every day is fun when you spend it at a Phillies game with your group of 25 or more. Take advantage of special group opportunities, including discounts, theme nights, party areas, and much more. No matter what size group, there are always benefits and special options. For more information, check out phillies.com slash group tickets. Ashy drove in the first run for the Phils. That was in the fifth inning. Darren Ruff has tied it here in the seventh inning. It means the Nationals have now lost a lead in the sixth inning or past the sixth inning in four of the six games so far this year. So let me get this right. Max Scherzer has 13.2 innings pitched. Yep. He's given up one run. One run. And he's 0 and 1. One earned run. One earned run. Yeah. And he's 0 and 1. <laughs> Today was the first <laughs> earned run that he, he's allowed in the two games. Tried to go back to the same spot. Ashy did not bite. It's 1 and 2. Yeah, these are the kind of at bats right here that are going to test Cody as the year goes on. You know, he, he, you want him to be in there and play and hit against the tough left handers. There you go. All right. Three hit day. He'll have to retire that bat, but it was well worth it. Yep. We'll give up a bat for a hit any time. Seven three hit games last season for Cody Ashey. And now Ryan Howard, who has had a tough day, struck out in the first with a runner at second, struck out in the third with runners at first and third, and struck out in the fifth with runners on second and third. Let's see if he can make it up right here. They're deep in the outfield. They play on the pole in the infield, not drastically though. I should say not as drastically as usual. Ryan has gone to much more of a tall stance in the batter's box. He noticed that and that was not what he came out of spring training with. You know, Ryan came out. Spring training more more to his old stance, his old sort of crouch, uh, spread out, no stride stance. When he got back up to Philly, seemed to go back to his uh, stand tall, bat up straight up and down stance. Yeah, there was a period of time, obviously, when he was having his great numbers as he fouls this one off his foot or off his leg. Where he didn't really tinker with his stance. Right now his legs throbbing. <laughs> One-two pitch, swinging a miss. Four strikeouts today for Ryan Howard. Darren Ruff though has tied this ball game up. A leadoff pinch hit home run. We wobbled that one into the seats in left center field. So we'll go to the eighth inning here in Philadelphia. All even at two.
sports stores. Go further. By Jefferson, where health is all we do. Call 1-800-JEFF-NOW or visit jefferson.edu. Buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Delaware Valley Honda dealer or visit DelValHondaDealers.com today. Top of the eighth inning. It's a 2-2 ball game thanks to Darren Ruff's home run. He'll stay in the ball game and play first base. Takes over for Ryan Howard. He's part of a double switch, so Giles will bat in Howard's spot. Kenny Giles, one and two thirds so far, three strikeouts, and he'll face Yanel Escobar as we start the eighth inning. So it's rough at first. Hernandez at second, Galvis at short, Ashy at third, just to run down the infield. Escobar takes a little high. Escobar one for three, grounded out, lined out, singled his second time up. Down the right field line, and it's one ball, one strike. Back up, Cody. <laughs> Oh yeah, he is even. Escobar is not up there to bunt. There he goes. Now he's backing up. Good slider. Probably a different way I can label that when I say good slider. I mean that that, that pitch is when it's on, filthy. it's filthy. <laughs> filthy. <laughs> like my martinis. <laughs> <laughs> what two pitch? That one was not like your martinis right there. That's what they call a helicopter, right? Yep. But Chooch said when it's on and it's right, it really resembles Brad Lidge's slider. Yeah. It's, a great it's almost compliment. like a, a spitter. It's almost like a 90 mile an hour spitter. You just call it a spitter like it's like whew, just disappears down into the left. Harper's on deck. Three balls, two strikes to Escobar. 94 on that fastball, and it remains three and two. A long talk with the uh, um, with Bob, uh, pitching coach. Uh, yeah, Bob McClure <laughs> about the gun. About the gun. He thinks a four miles an hour faster now. And they were back when he pitched. So he, what he's thinking is that Giles is through that one 97, then it's really 93. Yeah, really. Yeah. Now, my eyes sitting next to home plate during spring training, and they're flashing 92, 93, 92. It looks like a hundred to me. My old eyes. It's tough. It, it's tough to say. It, it, when Giles is at his peak. Mm -hmm. It looks like 99 <laughs> from here. There's Bryce Harper. Harper's one for three. He homered his first time up. Slider low, one ball, no strikes. Ben, you 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 know better. You, you know you haven't been out of the game that long, but yeah. um, this looks to me like everybody throws much harder than when I played. Just watching the playoffs last year, the World Series. The Royals can't have that many guys that throw 100 or 98 to 102. Out toward right field. That's playable for Fran Corey. Got it toward the end of the bat. One out. Having a, a juiced gun definitely makes the game more interesting. I mean, everyone wants to see 99, 100. But his velocity is definitely down. I mean, Deacon's still throwing 97, 98 when he comes in ball games. Right. Zimmerman's been on base twice today. He's walked and he is single. 
Another fly ball to right. This one not that deep. Hernandez, the second baseman, over toward the line. Two hands. Two outs. We had this discussion last year about pitch speeds. That the speed that matters. Obviously, Ben, you 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 weren't here, and I'll get your take on it. The speed that matters is the speed where the batter has to look fastball, where the batter must be concerned that. If he isn't ready for that fastball, it'll go right by him. And I think that's more like 95, 96 ish. Which is so commonplace nowadays. Clint Robinson's the batter with a runner at first. First pitch outside, one ball and no strikes. Robinson singled back in the fourth. And he's grounded out twice. Once to second, and the other one was a check swing, slow roller that O'Sullivan handled. I went out when the White Sox were in a couple years ago. I went out for supper with uh, Paul Camerco, and obviously we know Paulie's numbers throughout the years. But I was asking him different things, and he said, "Bottom lines, if you cannot hit a 95 on our fastball, he goes, you're not going to make it in this game anymore." He goes, "Everybody throws 95. Everybody." He goes, I'll tell you right now, he goes, and I put up some good numbers. If I came in the league now, I wouldn't have wouldn't come close to those numbers. You know, and Paulie's Yeah, for sure. I mean his <laughs> numbers like a very honest uh it's a very honest assessment. opinion of, yeah. uh, of the way it is. And Paulie uh, he's a very cerebral person, one, probably the most cerebral hitter I've ever played with, but for him to make that comment, you know, he gotta hit it. That one's out to right. That'll drop in for a base hit for Robinson. Stopping at second is Escobar. Two on, two outs. Time for the Major League Notebook. Murph, take it away, buddy. All right, thank you very much, T-Mac. A big loss for the Cleveland Indians this afternoon. They lost their catcher, Jan Gomes, uh, in the first inning today with what appears to be a pretty serious knee injury. They're saying six to eight weeks. Terry Francona was uh, quoted saying that would be a killer if they lose him for that long of a time. So Jan Gomes is down right now. Also, uh, did you see this story, guys? Seattle Seahawks quarterback Russell Wilson telling HBO Real Sports that he has not given up the dream of playing Major League Baseball. Wow. Of course, he was drafted uh, by the Texas Rangers. He's still in their system right now. And uh, he says that he very much would like to play two sports. He also is currently negotiating a contract with the Seattle Seahawks. So perhaps that is part of it as well. But uh, he says he thinks he could play two sports. He would like to play two sports. So that story is uh, still developing. We'll keep you posted on that, guys. I'll be honest with him. He thinks he could do it. Why not? Just yeah. kind of try to do it. I mean, it's been done before, for sure. Well, don't tell Adam LaRoche's son that because uh, Bo Jackson was trying to convince him that he was a two sport athlete at one point <laughs> during spring training. Almost takes a strike at 0 2. That's who I say is the best athlete of all time, Bo Jackson. I, I, I couldn't disagree with him. Uh, could run you over, hit it 550 feet, and throw you out from the wall. <laughs> what, else, what else could you ask for? No balls, two strikes with two runners on here in the eighth inning. Tapper foul. I was there when he let off that All Star game uh, in Anaheim. Rick, Rick Rushell and hit it out straight away center field. That was. It was a <laughs> shot. <laughs> it's amazing. If anybody hasn't seen the exchange with uh, Bo Jackson and Adam LaRoche's son, it's priceless. Really? You can Google that if you want to. No balls, two strikes. Swing and a miss. Ramos down on strike side is retired. Getty Giles allows a couple of base runners, but goes to the slider to get the last out here in the eighth inning. This is filthy, nasty, whatever you want to call it. It's also the third out of the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning with the Phils tied up at two.
brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. What'd you say, Ben, when this happened? When he lined out to Cody Ashley like this? You said something. It wasn't hang with him, but it was something. I'm not quite sure. It's, it's, it was a good play. You know, quick reaction. Stay with him. Stay with him. Did you say it, Mike, or did Ben yes, say it? Oh, I you did. said it. Remember, I said, I could hear Pete Rose. Oh, right that's now. right. Stay with him. Frank Court. Good idea. Show his good button. idea. Very good idea. Frank Court 0 for 3. He's lined out. And he's flied out twice. Chops that foul. It's 0 and 2. Stammen, third pitcher used today by the Nationals. Xavier Sudanio pitched the seventh, gave up the home run. Jake Diekman is starting to throw in the bullpen for the Phillies. Broken bat, spinner over to first, and Zimmerman will win the race to the back. One out. Like Jeff trying to guard the plate a little bit, maybe poke that one over first again. <laughs> Here's a double Herrera. Can he be the hero for a second straight game? They give the Phils the lead and shut the door in the top of the ninth inning. Can you imagine signing a professional contract when you're 16? Can you imagine a scout going out on a limb when a guy is 16? He's 16. He's not even close to being done as far as growing goes. And looking at that stat and we said that I was surprised he only hit 12 home runs in the minor leagues overall overall yeah, two last year because I think he has some juice we saw him hit, you know go deep in spring training a couple times but I think he does have that a little bit of pop in his back where he can hit a home run and, and I, I don't know I mentioned this too I'm surprised just because he played in the Texas League where the ball does carry in a lot of those ballparks right. two balls and no strikes to Herrera. Tried one there. <laughs> sure. What he, does, what he does do is something I know you're familiar with because I know you're a good golfer. Man. Uh, Tom, I don't, I don't have to discuss. Yeah, I don't have to be part of that conversation. But he's very connected to his core. I think we talked about this earlier. He he obviously finishes his swing almost like a golfer. But mm -hmm. You don't you don't see um, you don't see that many hitters spin through the ball like he does and the bat just kind of follows his body around. Yeah. So very interesting. Hits with his big muscles not with his hands. He's got it even two balls two strikes Hernandez is on deck. Popped him up left side of the infield. And Desmond and shortstop is there. And there are two outs. <laughs> All right, so now Cesar Hernandez, who has a hit today, he's one for three. And for the season, he is two for seven. Played second base today for Chase Utley. Who was available off the bench? Phillies of Utley, Blanco, Sizemore, and Ruiz that are available on the bench. First pitch breaking ball, it's 0 1. Softly to the right side. Ugla is up with it. Throws out Hernandez. One, two, three, go the Phils here in the eighth. Time for the ninth inning. Another tight game between the Phils and the Nationals.
Philly's Baseball Academy is for boys and girls ages 6 to 14. You get professional coaching, skill development for Philly's players, coaches, and Baseball Academy instructors. It includes official Philly's Baseball Academy uniform. You get a trip to Citizens Bank Park. Many weeks and locations to choose from. Right now is the time to take a look. Go to philliescamps.com or call 610-520-3400 for more information. Top of the ninth inning, it's a 2 2 ball game. All right, so the Phillies won last night in nine innings, or two to ten innings, and they won on Friday night four to one. So cl close games, tightly contested games. Here's Jake Diekman, whose ERA is going down. Three games, one rough game, two solid games, and he'll pitch the top of the ninth against Ian Desmond. Dan Ugla and then the pitcher spot Tyler Moore is in the hole right now. First pitch to shortstop Freddie Galvis nice play he flips across his body one out. Brian yeah, Sandberg said the other day that he wants him to be more aggressive he's been more aggressive defensively he was talking about his defense. Wow, I tell you, I'm, I mean, that, that takes some trust in your hands right there. And that, 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 you know, back in the old days, he made a play earlier in the game. I think it was in the first inning, second batter of the game, where he circled to his right and, and, and caught it on the run, running towards home plate. You know, in the old days, they used to just kind of swing over there and backhand that ball and show off their arm. They talked about the play from the hole. You know, you had to be able to make the play from the hole. And that play right there, a lot of one handed uh, ground ball work nowadays that they really frowned on back in the day. I don't say anything wrong with it. Players are just slicker and more athletic defensively. Plus, you were taking ground balls on what they called uh, Iwo Jima at uh, Jack Russell Stadium. Was it that they called that? <laughs> all the uh, potholes or well, all the bumps and bruises to it? There is some truth to the fields being you know, close to perfect nowadays. Uh -oh. Out to center field, Herrera goes to a spot and makes the catch. I don't know. That one just looked like it had a little uh, pop to it to me when it left home plate. Well, here's Tyler Moore who will pinch hit with two outs in the ninth inning. Dan Ugg was an unusual player, isn't he? The damage he did a couple years ago, and then he just. Marvel. And then it just stopped. I mean, it stopped. Well, he did a lot of work this year. It might sound strange, working with a physical therapist on his eyes, trying to strengthen his eyes and keep the movement of his head in the proper spot when he would swing the bat. I don't know if he needs to do some therapy work with a guy that can keep his shoulder, his left shoulder, on the ball longer. <laughs> But our pitch to Moore is fouled back due to the uh, Hall of Fame club. And it's one and one. He, he had, had the, it. He had the surgery done on his eyes when he was in Atlanta. Apparently they do that a lot, that corrective surgery, the laser surgery. He and McCann both. Outside, two balls, one strike. Tyler Moore on the year is 0 for 10. Think they were doing the wave anymore? The wave still in vogue. Well, I think uh, from time to time they did it the other day here at the ballpark. Ben played in Seattle where they they started it in the set up Seattle area. So he's a professional when it comes to the wave. <laughs> Check the, swing. The wave. I think for a while there, geez, they got a couple of waves going here right now. I thought it was kind of like a sign of being bored as a fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is kids' opening day, and the game is uh, two and a half hours old, so maybe they're looking to keep themselves busy. There's Michael Taylor, who has struck out twice. He's walked, and he's flied to right. Fanatic must have gone in to take a nap or something if they're doing the wave.
Swing and a miss. 98 on that fastball from Deekman. It's 0 and 1. Phillies bottom of the ninth inning. It'll be Cameron Rupp, Darren Ruff, and Ben Revere. Those are the scheduled hitters. Good running uh, time here. Especially now in a 2 1 count. You got your leadoff hitter to lead off the next inning. If you get thrown out, you get a man in scoring position here. And so there's a pinch hitter on first base. His legs probably aren't really loose. Swing and a miss of the slider. It's 2 and 2. Healthy. I put the automatic steal on her. You have to go right now. Moore does not did not have a big lead the last time. Because technically you want him. I mean, you don't want him to get thrown out, but it's surely not the worst thing in the world if he does get thrown out. So. He does not go. The pitch is outside. It's three and two. Now he is going to go. Three balls, two strikes, and two outs. And Cameron Rupp is reminding everybody of that. Middle infielders are deep. Got him. Rupp hangs on to the foul tip. The inning is over. No runs, no hits. One man left. Here we go. Bottom of the ninth inning. Cameron Rupp, Darren Rupp, and then the top of the order, Ben Revere. Philly's looking to win it in their last at bat. Heading to the bottom of the ninth inning, all tied up at two guys. And after this game is finally over, the Bills will get on the bus, head to New York City, and here are the pitching matchups for their matchup against the Mets. Aaron Harang will take on Jake and Jacob DeGrom on Monday. That's an afternoon game, opening day for the New York Mets at home. And then it'll be uh, Buchanan taking on Harvey on Tuesday, and Jerome Williams and Jonathan Neese on Wednesday. They're your pitching matchup for the Phils and the New York Mets, guys. All right, Mercy of the Rookie of the Year, National League Rookie of the Year first. Then Matt Harvey is coming off Tommy John surgery that was lighting up the radar gun the other day against the Nationals. And Neese, who has pitched well against the Phillies during his career. First, though, they'll try to get to Aaron Barrett here in the, the bottom of the ninth inning. Barrett's third ball game, three strikeouts, an inning and two thirds. This is game three of what was an unbelievable stretch for the Phillies against starting pitchers, right, Murph, that are top of the line starting pitchers. The three that we've seen with the Nationals, the three we'll see with the Mets, and then we go back to face the Nationals for four games next weekend. Yeah, it, it's certainly when you when you looked at it uh, at the beginning of the, the ten game stretch, uh, certainly some terrific pitchers going against the Phillies, but so far so good uh, for the Phillies, uh, getting the two wins over the Nationals. I'd like to finish it up with a sweep right here for sure. Cameron Ruff will lead it off. Ruff is 0 for 3. 
And 0 for 6 on the season. The pitcher spot is next, or what was the pitcher spot, but it's Darren Ruff now. Barrett's first pitch is in there. Oh, no balls and one strike. Vision gets a little nasty at home plate now as that shadow. You see the shadow around home plate starts to creep out there. Mm. You got a hanger. The ball's passing out of the light and into the darkness. And the backdrop is bright. I'm sure Barrett stuff to pick up. I'm sure Deekman was unbelievable to pick up. Oh and two to Cameron Rupp. Came back with another uh, breaking pitch, a slider. Darren Ruff has been watching this at bat. You get a good get a good idea of exactly what it's going to do to him when he gets up there. Think it'll be pretty similar. Oh yeah. Well, it's been two fastballs sandwiched around two breaking pitches. It's no balls and two strikes to Cameron Ruff. Well, that's a tough pitch to hold up against. It's one and two. Got him. 95 down. One out. Tied him up there. It's a good pitch. Time now for our W to make some delivery of the game, and it just so happens it occurred in the seventh inning with this guy at the plate. Elevated That's fastball. That's a good looking stroke, isn't it? Nice, quick, short, boom. Let's see if he can add to that here. I have said that since he's come up. He's a big guy. He's one of those guys that you don't realize how big he is so you stand next to him. But for a big guy, he's got a short swing. He really, really does. He, you need to find out about I, We had meeting after meeting after meeting, and I just kept saying, we've got to find out about Darren Ruff. We've got to find out about Darren Ruff. Give him a long period of time. Yeah. yeah. He pulls that one foul. Yeah, he's the one young hitter we have that has a... Big time upside, you know. They're saying Dominic Brown doesn't, but you know, Darren's a 20 to 25 guy, 80, 90, 75 to 90 RBIs. I mean, something like 550, 600 at bats. Even one ball and one strike to rough. Swing and a miss, one and two. Nationals are off to Boston after this ball game. They will be the uh, the opening day opponent for the Red Sox at Fenway Park tomorrow. One ball and two strikes. Breaking ball, two and two. Is that a day game on Monday, Tom? Do you know for the Red Sox? It is a day game. Yep. So they have the game of the week. Yeah. Tonight in New York. Yep. And then have to play a day game home opener tomorrow. Yeah, play their home opener tomorrow. Swing and a miss. Gets away, and Ramos will flip to first. Back to back strikeouts for Barrett. Two to three of the put out, and now Ben Revere. Well, we'll see Scherzer. Uh, one of the first first or second game there, right? Yeah, Scherzer is scheduled to pitch uh, against the Phillies on Friday. 
guess he would match up against O'Sullivan again. Outside with the first pitch. Revere is one for three, walked his first time, singled in the fifth inning. He's also struck out and he's fly to center. Phillies of the Nationals went 10 innings yesterday. We're here in the bottom of the ninth inning in a 2 2 game. Off the foot. Bounced off the knee, huh? Seen a lot of those in the first week, haven't we? It is. It's remarkable the angle that it can get to that angle. <laughs> Chopper back toward the middle, and Desmond is there. And he throws him out. A one-two-three inning. Well, for the second straight game, we're going to go extra innings on to the top of the tenth. You know, Escobar will lead it off when we return. of a day where you can spend it at the ballpark which many folks have in fact over 30,000 or you can spend it at the carnival which is just a couple of blocks away I don't know we can get Ben on that Ben can your legs fit in something like that uh, no they cannot but that's about my speed <laughs> top of the 10th inning it's a 2 2 ball game extra innings for the second straight day the Phillies play these kind of tight games they probably have the upside against the other team because their bullpen is probably better than the other team's bullpens on most occasions. This is what the Phillies bullpen has done in this series nine innings one earned run and ten strikeouts as Deakman will start the top of the tenth. Well the bullpen's been great and we still have a little firepower left on the bench. Chooch. Chase. Blanco. Blanco has been swinging the bat well, so we'll see. Well, Deakman walked one batter in the ninth inning, and now he'll face Escobar, Harper, and Zimmerman. He has DeFreitas warming up uh, behind him. Escobar up for the fifth time this afternoon. First pitch is. Inside one ball no strikes. Bill's trying to sweep out the Washington Nationals have a four and two homestand. There's a fair ball down the right field line. Francoeur will eventually get to it, but Escobar is going to be at second base. And that's where he'll start off here in the top of the 10th inning. That was some good hitting right there. And I'll, I, I'm always a, you know, it's not hindsight, and I'll bring it up, but I've always been a guard the line guy. Some some managers aren't. Um, I mean, a couple schools have thought on, I mean, what are the odds of him hitting the ball down the first baseline? Yeah, so even the opposite opposite way, you'd still guard the line as a manager. I I used to. I, 
I, I mean, my short, my little minor league managerial <laughs> career. Yes, I, I was a big guard the line guy. It's you know, it was, it's it's the old takes three singles to beat you. It's Harper squaring and he bunts at it and it rolls foul. Well, after the at bat he had against Jake last night, I don't blame him. <laughs> it's just Jake had his way with him and hey. You know, if, if you want your three hole hitter bunning, that's up to your discretion. I'd like to see him swing it. If one maybe, for seven. Maybe we <laughs> put too much heat on Matt Williams last night for not bunting, and he, he heard about it. <laughs> I don't like this early square around, though. I never have liked that. I don't know why they do that. You know, to me, it, to me, you stand there and you stare at that pitcher with your bat squared around in a bunning position. You know, for four or five seconds, you're just staring at him. You like feel like a target. You're you're rigid. Plus, the both corner uh, infielders are right, you know, right on top of you. Ahead, 0 and 2 to Harper with a runner at second. He pulls it to the first baseman, Darren Ruff. That will get the runner over to third. One out, and the go-ahead run is at third base. Great job by Harper there. Yeah. You know, he does get something soft, which makes it a little bit easier. But he accomplishes what he needed to do. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I'm not sure that Jake intended to throw something off speed, you know, in the inner half of the plate right there. Well, he's going for the strikeout. I'll tell you that. Definitely going for the strikeout. He just left the pitch up. All right, now what would you do with Ryan Zimmerman here? Zimmerman is one hit today. He's one for three. He's three for 22. Uh, on the season, you got a lefty Clint Robinson on deck, and then you have to deal with. Well, we'll have some time to think about it because it looks like Ryan Sandberg's going to make a double switch. So they're going to bring Defreitas in. So they're not going to walk Zimmerman intentionally. They're going to bring Defreitas in to face him, and Grady Sizemore will come in to play left field. Ben Revere will check out. Sizemore will bat fourth, which means he will bat in the next inning. Next half inning. So a double switch, new pitcher for the Phils. Jake Diekman is done after an inning and a third. He's responsible for the runner over at third base. A pitching change will get you set with the particulars when we return. Two. There's one out in the top of the tenth inning, and Justin DeFreitas is the new pitcher with a runner at third. He'll come on to face uh, Ryan Zimmerman. Numbers for DeFreitas. This is his third game. He has three innings and four strikeouts. Phillies uh, designated uh, Cesar Jimenez for assignment, so they're without another left-hander. The first pitch to Zimmerman in the dirt oh. gets away from Rupp, and here comes the go-ahead run. And it's 3 2 Washington. It'll be a wild pitch. 
And the run charged to the line of Jake Deakman. Boy, does a manager hate that. You know, it's part of the game, but wow. The rougher just a little late getting down. I would like to see his his butt up a little bit higher with the man on third. That's you know, you just have to make sure you get in a position where you can keep that ball in front of you. What a slider. That was a slider. Which has been very good for him so far. It wasn't great in spring training. It's been very good. Except for right there. Maybe that one was out over the plate a little bit. And one ball and two strikes. Just the second run the bullpen has allowed in this series. Ground ball back toward the middle. And Freddie Galvis near the bag. Hurries the throw. Not in time. Gives everybody credit. He was moving up the line. I don't know if they'll redo this or not. Well, I'll tell you what happened. Zimmerman got out of the box pretty good because he kind of had to run, run across the plate to hit that ball up the middle. And then sort of see him running out of the box. Yep. And then Freddie just kind of laid back. You know what I mean? He laid back. You may want to review it. He smelled that one. I think this is worth a review. Or worth a request for a review. I think he's out. It looks like the ball is in the glove before the foot actually hits the pillow. Hits the bag. So Bob Davidson's going to trot over with Jerry Lane. Is I think he's out. There you are. It's close. It's close. I think he's out though. I will say I am terrible at these. Terrible. Well, this is a good In teaching baseball, tool. Baseball. I'm. I haven't got one right in the NFL yet. Not one challenge. Right. <laughs> yeah. You do that on the side or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just. I'm telling you. I. I'm not good at them. All right, well, I'm going to go out on the limb and say he is out. I say out. Mike? Uh, I would say he's out, but there's also the possibility of insufficient you evidence. Could, you could get the call stands here instead of uh, overturned or confirmed. I think it's a good it's a good request at this point, though. I mean, to get this out, if you can. Boom. I don't think Ruff know it was going to be that close either. I'd like to see him get a little more yes, extension. Yes, you're exactly right. A little cheat, little, you know what I mean? A little walk off would have got it. It's a good point. Ball is just arriving into his glove, and Zimmerman's foot is not on the bag. Right there, it's hard to tell if he's on the bag or not. It is amazing right there how much that walk off uh, cheat move by the first baseman gets you calls. Get some extension, yeah. at least, you know, get get out there. You know, a lot of times you think he pulled his foot. He walked off too early when in reality, most almost always they, their foot is on the back. A couple guys when we were younger, I thought they were really good at it was Keith Hernandez and Don Mattingly were both oh. very good at it. Those two were. That's man. one of the fun. I played in 85. I played first base. And uh, that was one of the fun things about first base. You know, that, that move, that cheap move. You, you walk off saying, gotcha. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you go out. <laughs> well, they're taking a long look at this. I mean, they have every replay at, at our disposal and whatever the Nationals have as well. Take another look. We'll slow it down as much as possible. The headsets are off, by the way, from the umpires. And he is out at first base. Technology is so fast in this day and age. We've, te we've seen times where that call has been has stood. Now think about that call, you know, four or five years ago. Or yep. or even. All right, so the ball was in his glove, and then we, we've gauged this one thirtieth of a second. Uh, <laughs> his foot hits the bag. Can you imagine all the jawing and arguments that have happened over the yeah. years in baseball over something like could have that? Been avoided, huh? We could have seen the kicking of dirt on the umpire's <laughs> shoes and the throwing of a hat. 
Ben's old manager would have done that. Oh, Lou Pinella. Uh oh. Out toward right center field. Herrera on the run. He's not going to get this one. It is off the top of the wall. And Robinson will pull in a second with his third hit of the day. Kid's impressive. He has two uh, nice little singles over second. And God, that ball was hit well. Well, that's a huge uh, call now of Ryan Zimmerman at first base to keep this at a one run game because there's a good chance, a good chance he would score. On that. I can't believe this ball carried that much. Talk about extension through the ball. Wow, right up the old That is Toyota. as close as it gets. Mike and I both looked at each other like, did that ball just really travel that far? <laughs> Here's Wilson Ramos, and Ramos waves at a breaking pitch. It's 0 1. Well, it's 4 0 1. I mean, it's not like. Not like it's old Detroit. <laughs> 440 to dead it's, center. I mean, you, you hit a few 4 0 1 in your day. Yeah. Sometimes with a hook, sometimes with a draw. <laughs> it's come to that at age 38. A one pitch in the dirt, blocked by Rupp, and it's one ball, one strike. Speaking of hooks and draws, I wonder what's going on down there in, uh, in Augusta. Augusta. In due time, gentlemen, in due time. The leaders did tee off till 2:50. Two strikes. Toyota Major League scoreboard. The Atlanta Braves will not bend. Go 162 and 0. They have lost to the Mets 4 to 3. They're now 5 and 1 on the season. And the Mets are heading back to New York. Tomorrow will be their home opener. And the Phillies will meet them there. One ball, two strikes to Ramos. Another good play by Rupp. It's even two and two. Phillies will have Galvis, Ashy, and Sizemore. Those are the scheduled hitters with uh, Chase Utley available off the bench. Try to change up, and it's three and two. Careful here. Three balls and two strikes. You have Desmond on deck. Ramos is homered in this series. He's three for 19 in the season. Robinson, a big lead off second. And a foul ball. It remains three and two. Drive face it into left center field. Robinson's going to score. It's an extra run for the Nationals, and it's now a 4 2 ball game here in the top of the 10th inning. Well, that would hurt. You know, it makes that uh, bottom of the 10th totally different inning now when you two down. It's hard to get that tying run to the plate or the winning run to the plate. And there's definitely a little bit more wiggle room. Mm -hmm. Drew Storm when he comes in. Now he's had some eventful games though here at this ballpark. Desmond whacks it to third. Good Cody Ashy is up with it. Side is retired, but two run score for the Nationals. And Drew Storm, the closer, will come on. Freddie Galvis will look to start things off when we return for the bottom of the tenth.
National Series finale. Plus, we'll hear from Ryan Sandberg and reactions from the clubhouse on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Well, Phillies have some work to do. Down by two here in the bottom of the tenth inning. Drew Storr in the closer for the Nationals will take over. Justin DeFreitas threw a wild pitch that allowed one run to score, and then he's charged with another run. Let's hope his offense could pick him up here in the bottom of the tenth inning. Story. Wednesday picked up the save against the Mets. He's had kind of an interesting run as the closer for the Nationals. Former first round pick out of Stanford was the closer and then was demoted to being the setup guy because they brought in Rafael Soriano and then they put him back into the closer's role. Didn't re sign Soriano. Put it back in the closer's role last year and now he is officially the closer again for Washington. Got good stuff, but he can get erratic from time to time. Yeah, closer stuff is exactly what he has. Outside, one ball, no strikes. Galvis, Ashy, and Brady Sizemore are the scheduled hitters. Now you got to take one. Not to, he's probably taking a strike anyway, but you definitely take now. Ball three. Everybody runs to the mound immediately. All right, calm down. <laughs> For me, that's a wasted meeting. It's, he knows what he needs to do. Yeah, I think it's kind of like break the bad momentum. I guess. Yeah, there's ball four, so the tying run is coming to the plate. That is big. Very big. Because now. Uh, Opens the door for Chase up. And it brings Ashy up, who's three for four today. Struck out his first time up, singled, uh, doubled, and then singled again. Here is Chase, batting gloves on, ready to go if needed. Well, he'll be getting a lead bat in his hand here in a second. Outside, one and zero. Oh. Can't believe they haven't got him ready unless he's already hit off, been hitting off the tee down below or something. But I'm sure he's ready. Yeah, he, I'm sure at some point late in the game he was starting to fire away in the cage, as you guys mentioned. There's Matt Dendecker. He comes in to play left field. Oh, well, I have a quick second. I want to tell Mike how much of a thrill this was for me personally. You know, uh, I'd be remiss. I mean, growing up here, obviously, you're a huge fan. This has been an absolute thrill for me. Look forward to it in future games. Well, thanks, Ben. Me too. Enjoyed it. This has been your last. My buddy Brian texted me last night in the third inning. He goes, Dude, that's Mike Schmidt. <laughs> <laughs> I said yes. I am very fortunate. And we've had two games that have had a, we've had a lot to talk about. Yeah. These two games too. Two and zero to Ashy. Taking the strike. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. I mean, your three hole hitter with a two and oh count, the fastball. I mean, that you'd hope your three hole hitter could pop one, right? I don't know if you could do anything with that one anyway. Two balls, two strikes. All right, now's when you got to grind. Well, you got to grind this tough seeing up there. You got the shadows around on the play. Just try to put the ball in play. Yep.
inside three and two. You got the sun on the pitcher in the shadows of the light light stanchions at home plate. Big pitch right here. Ball four, two on with nobody out. Let's see what Ryan Sandberg does. It looks like it will be Grady Sizemore. That's why that second run was so big. Yep. So big. Eight balls, two strikes. Sizemore taking a look at Pete McCannon in the third base coach's box. Yeah, I mean, I didn't see the signs, but I would say it's a must bunt situation. And your old friend Matt Thornton's up and throwing in the there. He is. Sizemore so far two for ten. Runners lead off first and second. Corners cheating in. Swing it away. He takes up. It's one ball and no strikes. We have seen this time and time again with Drew Storen, particularly in this ballpark. Chase up is still available. Oh, he's hitting. Hitting, no surprised. Get the tying run into scoring position if you get an effective bunt down up to second base. One ball, one strike. Is that inside move you like? That's why I, I would never be a good manager because my, I, I always have a sense of, of trying to prevent something as opposed to looking at the positive side of what could happen. And, I, and, and managers are very obviously both the managers we have in the field right now aren't really bunting guys, right? We saw it last night with Matt Williams, and they have information that we don't. You know what I'm saying? They, Yes, we might have. I thought maybe we'd get out of there with a with a ball, cause a check swing. That was pretty close. And Sizemore is rung up, and there's one out here in the tenth inning. And hindsight's always you know, crazy thing, but it is always 2020. And that knowing what we know now, the tendency would be to second guess. The other the other way to look at it from a manager's standpoint is uh, if he bunts him over. Frank Coors the hitter. And you have two choices. You can pinch hit Utley for Frank Coor. Or they're yeah. going to walk him. Yeah. But then you have Herrera with the bases loaded. Not a bad thing, right? Feeling pretty good about himself after last night. You think Rhino got gun shy there after what happened with the three bunts that weren't executed last night? Well, I, I, I don't know that answer. I just, I mean. Managers do things for a reason. They believe they, you know, they think positive. They, they have information. They, we don't. And uh, I think it's two for three. Lifetime against Store. No balls in one strike. With runners on first and second. Outside one and one. Boy, it's tough coming off the bench like this too. You can sit and get the, you've been given the day off. You can sit there the whole game watching it develop. You're going, oh geez, it looks like a close one. I can see myself up there. <laughs> You're waiting on it the whole game. In the air to right field, Bryce Harper. That was, was close. The boys. Yeah. That was close. 
Galvis tags from second. And he'll get to third. That run doesn't really matter. So two outs, and here comes Odubel Herrera. But he just missed it. He didn't miss it. He just hit the bottom of it. <laughs> I mean, that was. You could hear the crack of the bat. I mean, he. He got it. Well, he's Herrera last night. Can he duplicate his heroics here this afternoon? That hit would get one home here today, but it would probably put runners on first and third, if not second and third. He's two for 13 on the year. He has a base hit today. It was his first time up. Why would the third baseman be playing in for the fun? That's my first question. The second point is on back to the bunt to bunt or not to bunt issue. I've heard that you don't bunt. I mean, it, it, it's, it's an old uh, axiom you don't bunt if you're the visiting team, if you're on the road. If you have last at bats, I mean, all you really want to do is tie the game up. Yep. Dribbler to third. Is that why he's playing in? Maybe. Escobar's throw. Not in time. It's a one run game. He Maybe. had a vision. It that, didn't work. No, that, he shouldn't even be anywhere near making that play. <laughs> yeah, because Freddie's run means nothing. Right. right. First and second, two outs, a one run ball game. It's a heck of a play by Escobar. Well, yeah, but I mean, Ben, you know, I mean, there's two outs in the game. Well, what the heck's he doing playing on the grass with uh, Herrera hitting? Who could rope one right by him? Now, would you do it here with Hernandez up? No, why? No. I'd be back with a shadow of the light tower is on the infield grass. Just so you can keep it in the infield, right? Yeah. The last thing you want this ball is getting somewhere in the outfield. First pitch pulled toward the right side. Zimmerman's got it. Throws to store and covering. And the ball game is over. Oh, that's a good play by on. And they win it in ten innings by a final score of four to three. Well, the Phillies put a little pressure on here in the bottom of the tenth inning, but just got one. And they'll take uh, taking two of three from Washington this weekend. Our Chevrolet player of the game, Wilson Ramos, a sacrifice fly and an RBI single in today's ball game. Matt Williams team escapes with a victory this weekend. Well, here's that play you talked about. That was a nice play by uh, Zimmerman, ex third baseman, as we know. I, I thought one of the great defensive third basemen I've ever seen. Great hands. Former Gold Glover. Yeah, now that's a big play right there. That ball got caroms off his glove. He got a tie ball game. Instead, the Nationals win it in 10. We'll be back to talk a little bit more about it right after this from Philadelphia.